Welcome back to uh, Roots of Heaven. This is session number 14 entitled Connecting Trains. Uh, last session, the group um, entered the town of Onamount, uh, or rather fortified town, city, city of Onamount, uh, north of the city of Nock. Um, they learned a bit about the mysterious nature of the town, um, and ultimately were in search of an individual known as the Dollmaker. Uh, when they met up with this individual, they learned that the doll maker happened to be someone from Aveline and Sen's past, um, an individual they knew as the Abbot, um, and who they've learned to uh, understand is a celestial being that is associated with a historical figure of import from the War of Sword and Serpent known as Saint Markov. Um, the Abbot, or the doll maker has... Um, granted um, an offer uh, more so to um, their charge than to them uh, due to um, the Celestial's connection with um, a friend of their charge. Um, but Sophia is um, has been offered uh, safety um, inside of a uh, dread plane um, and the freedom to move beyond. Additionally, um, this is now being surveyed uh, by Namalia, and I believe it was Belroth. Yeah, um, they are currently um, in that dread plane and are in, having a conversation with one of its denizens. The denizen in question is uh, the Deceiver. Um, or rather a servant of the actual deceiver um, who uses the title flippantly. Uh, Fox-headed demon um, who they were talking with uh, at the end of last session, but I believe the conversations come to a conclusion. They have stressed that their desire is to have a doll that was taken from the train by interlopers um, and have it return. Um, the doll that was shown to them, they would recognize as Aveline. Now, I do not know if Belroth or Namalia, either of you two, are aware of the duplicitous nature of Aveline's ex current existence, in that there's two of her roaming around. I don't know if that's been made common knowledge. Or, yeah. Um, if you're sure we've seen the other one. Some of you. people you have. I don't. Have. Know they... I don't remember if we told them or not. I know Jai has definitely seen both. Um, I do not know if everyone has, or if that information has been made. Oh well, that's allowed. Uh, <laughs> uh, or if the information regarding them um, has been made um, available to everyone. Uh, that's entirely up to whoever is aware of the others in. Uh, presence in the material plane. I think Aveline knows. Jai told Aveline, yes. I and think it came knows. up when the Gulfias thing came up, too. Yeah. Yeah. So more people might be privy than you are aware. That's fine. Um, let's just assume it's common knowledge. Um, that, being, that being said, um, if you have any other questions for the Deceiver, uh, you're free. Feel free to ask them. Um, Keep in mind, the Deceiver is not asking you for the return of the doll as payment for the transactional um, uh, uh, agreement between St. Markov's uh, Celestial, the Abbot, the Dollmaker, whatever you want to call it, um, and um, uh, the, the Master of the Dreadplane um, hero. It is instead, they are stating they want this, and a boon could be granted to you if you return it. Didn't they also want Shatterspike? No, Shatterspike was not of interest to them. No. Okay. Shatterspike was present and is currently in the hands of the other party that was yeah. shown last session. I thought that it was mentioned that we needed to retrieve that. It is not important. Okay. I will cross that out, my, out of my notes then. The doll, for some reason, is... So, any other questions for the Deceiver from Belroth or Namalia?
I think I think Namalia doesn't know what she knows. <laughs> she doesn't know what she doesn't know. Right. Uh, and I think that to her bullshit meter, it all seems kind of legit. Like, so I think, yeah, I think we're good to go. Um, okay. Um, perfectly fine. So then if you step back outside of the portal, um, the uh, abbot... Um, has descended from uh, his lofty kind of uh, appearance and returned back to his priestly state. Um, and he would look to you and say, well then, do you need more time to suss out the matter? Or would you prefer to begin for her uh, safe detention now? Well, well, we'll go speak to her right away. And, you know, the, the, the final decision will be hers, of course. Uh, we'll, we'll go talk to her she, right away. She, yeah. rem she did not enter through the portal, but she did come here with you, if I recall. Oh, okay. So, uh, Sophia, we went through. It's strange. It's beyond strange. I think you'll be safe there, though. If you feel like I'll be safe, and if you don't think I'm going to be held against my will, then I will go. Um, I will I will remain there. Belroth, do you have any... Do you have any um, reservations about this? I, I mean, yeah, it's creepy. But... I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't go there, but it's it's up to you. That's true, Sophia. The final word is yours. We we checked it out. It's strange. It's weird. Um, if, but I I don't think you'll be held against your will. If you feel that it's safe, then I will go. It will be safer okay. here than it will be attempting to hide from. And I'm on anywhere else. I understand it, Dollmaker, that this is the only, these are the only individuals who are aware of this magical space. Am I right in that? The saint in his normal kind of uh, stature, uh, but still possessing a bit of his kind of uh, just presence uh, that he didn't really Glowy have. Glowy goodness. Yeah, he's, he's got like a glowy goodness that he did. Remember out in the crowd, I, I explained he can kind of basically like, you know, fall into a crowd and you wouldn't be able to pick him out. Mm. In here, it's like he kind of, even in his reverted state, he still kind of draws in kind of all of the energy and air in the room. Um, and uh, he says, correct. She nods and says, then I'll go. Um, thank you very much, and um, don't speak a word of this to anyone besides um, besides my friend. She can know. Um, and uh, yeah, she um, is guided by the abbot in. The abbot follows her in and stops for a second before he transgresses into the portal. He looks back to you, Namalia and Belra. I will be a time... If you wish to linger to ask me questions, I will not have a problem with that. But if you must carry on, I trust that you can find your way out. We can. He steps through the portal. It's behind him. Um, the room kind of like feels lesser without his presence. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like the room was... Very opulent, as I explained it. White, magnificent, holy relic in the center, very ornate. But it just feels like all of that was kind of blown up out of proportion by his presence. And now it just feels like a very tiny room that you're in. The relic still sits there in the center of the room, by the way, unguarded. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, it just feels like his presence was actually magnifying the... Uh, nature of the uh, the shrine. 
for lack of a better term. Uh, Namalia would, um, I guess, kind of pull Belroth out uh, to connect with the rest of the group. You aren't going and... to um, do anything with the uh, strange uh, holy relic in the center of the room? I mean, Namalia's not going to fuck with someone's, these people's relic. Um, okay. Probably... Yeah, we the wrong two people for this. I know. Ter <laughs> Terry uh, said might snatch it up if given the opportunity. Who knows? Terry would definitely oh, touch no. it without looking. 100%. Possibly, allegedly. It then would never. In in all honesty, it, it probably does not excite either of you two. It, it it is quite bejeweled and ornate, and the bone has been polished to like a high enough degree that it almost looks like it's actual ivory. But it's just a thigh bone that's been encrusted in gems and gold. Gross. Um, Hard pass. There's no barnacles. There's no toadstools. There's uh, no swords. This is not my aesthetic. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> It does not pass the vibe check. This is not pass not the vibe check. Much. <laughs> that, is a, that is a porson's leg. That is a <laughs> Okay. You step outside and you regroup. Yeah. And so we, uh, I mean, Namalia would just give a very, well, I guess we're, I mean, I guess she would be vague about. Well, no, she can't really be vague. We promised we wouldn't say shit, but we're about to say shit. Right? No. <laughs> but we're about to say shit. <laughs> I mean, she's safe and where she wants to be now. Leave it at that. Yeah, but what about so okay, so I guess <laughs> Malika would say this out loud. Uh, what about the doll? Oh. And then kind of look at Aveline awkwardly. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> what doll? Well, you, uh, so sorry, Namalia, um, or rather Zizo, had explained that Namalia came out and basically just caught you all up. So I'm assuming that there were no secrets then. Shit. Ugh. Yeah, no secrets. Everything that oh. you just witnessed between Namalia and Belroth. Treat as if you were there, as Namalia explains it in detail. It's one of those classic kind of, uh, instead of the video game just having them explain it to you again, the screen goes black for a second, fades back in, and, like, you know. Very Final Fantasy Seven. Yes. <laughs> but we can't tell anyone. Fair. Well, I have no My lips are sealed. Oh, Are God. They? Terry... <laughs> Is that including the, the brain ones or just your actual ones? So we need to find the other her and motions to Aveline. <laughs> How many? Oh, Aveline, I, I'm sorry. This is like a very rude question, but how many of you are there out there? A lot. <laughs> I don't know. Hundreds, maybe thousands. I can't really say. Um, but did he want Aveline or did he want one of the her other Avelines? He didn't want Aveline. Uh, I believe the I believe that the 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 other Aveline that he wanted uh, was on a train right now. Oh, so he wants the one that's with Gothias. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> so Jai told us that he saw another Aveline, right? Yes. And Gothias confirmed with me when I spoke to him that there was a, another Aveline. That he had Aveline. But we also had Aveline. So there's two Avelines. Jai is the only one who's seen it, though. That celestial being um, offered a boon in exchange for this. Uh, Hold on. No, you said no secrets. Right. It was actually the demon 
inside. Oh, of the, the demon. Oh, shit. Our boy. So the, does, the saint, I'm assuming the saint doesn't know about the doll. The saint doesn't want the doll. It's the it's the demon, the it's fox. The fox. Demon. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> do and y'all, uh, Sen and Aveline are familiar, right? Yes, they yeah. also don't know uh, their name. Mm-hmm. Do they? We just know them as the deceiver. Do you trust them? <laughs> I mean. It's in the name. As much as you can trust a fox demon. Yeah. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) It does give interesting gifts. The greatest trick the deceiver ever pulled was getting anyone but anyone to believe a word that came out of their mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty sure Belroth just tuned out half of what he said and was just like, it's a smarter way to go about it, to be fair. <sighs> They're all just going to need therapy after this. Yeah. So, I don't think that we know that we have had to reschedule, like, out of character, that we had to reschedule. Like, Jai knows that we had to reschedule with Goldias, but we don't know. Right? Yes, but... Because uh, we had tea. We I had w- tea plans with him. I will say, for simplicity's sake, uh, Jai will pass over the token and the keys to the auto carriage and state that he is going to be spending a time in um, on a mouth with um, basically courting the um, uh, the uh, the maiden fair and the uh, gentleman Dudley Do gentleman, gentleman yeah uh, <laughs> guy. So Jai's got business. Um, yeah. I would say that just for uh, sanity's sake, he would ask Belroth if Belroth is willing to exchange tokens and keys so that mm-hmm. Jai would hold on to the auto cycle. And if you were to have to go back to Nock, you would do so in the big bus and then he could chase you down. Okay. Okay. Don't fucking wreck it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume <laughs> my bike. I, I, this is my baby. <laughs> I assume, knowing Zach and his cunning wit, he would probably say something to the tune of, "Oh, it's okay. If I steal it, I'll just, or if I if I wreck it, I'll just steal you a new one." <laughs> <laughs> no, this this one is mine. We bonded. Bonded, okay. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, um, but Jai is basically out of the picture and those plot lines too um so So do we know that we now need to meet goldthias in nightmare goldthias is jai's situation okay so that's separate then he would say we can go and we can pay a visit to goldthias at night bank best we want to whenever i have okay so later then yeah that's but that train wrong. from the vision that we got from old foxy well that wasn't a vision that was a real place well it was a oh you saw the inside of it you saw the it inside was... of the train you were looking at so when okay. you passed beyond the portal you were in like a sandy mountainy kind of area and there was yeah a train. yeah 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 you then saw the inside of that train at another point in time that uh-huh. the fox apparently had um a memory available to view Okay. Um, and showed you it. And what you saw is people entering in, milling about, and then eventually the um, the rogue, the elf rogue of the group, the roguish looking fellow, um, without anybody noticing, opened up the Aveline box and then put the Aveline into a bag. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> okay. Um, but we didn't see Golthias, right? Oh no, because you that Aveline has been reunited with Golfias. Yeah, I'll kind of give you an out of character note because I think Elizabeth already knows this out of character anyways, but okay. it's not character knowledge. Just keep that in mind. But just so okay. you're you're not grinding your gears about it. Um uh, because it does sound like you're trying to make the connection. How did she get with Golfias? Mm-hmm. R- Raya, played by Jeremy on Sundays, was the one who took the Aveline duplicate out of the box, put it in his bag of holding. He then okay. met with Golthias at an auction in the city of uh, Bonrock. Dwarven auction, selling a lot of old estate stuff. One of the pieces of uh, interest for Golthias was a book, an old tome that he had drafted, which explains how to construct 
Avalines and things like Aveline. Um, he wanted the book. He did not know he was going to be able to get it because two other bidders also wanted the book. A Montoulet and another person. It's always the fucking Montoulets. Um, that said, Raya stole the book, absconded with it, and then gave the book to Golthias, and then just as an extra added bonus, he's like, uh, also, look at this, and handed her, or handed Golthias the doll, and Golthias was like, cool, I'll take that, and that's why he has it. There's the connection, but again, yeah. it's definitely a mystery to this party. Okay. I was just thinking that Sen would be like, if there's another Aveline that they're looking for, there's only two Avalines that Sen knows of. Yep. So the and conclusion is that maybe the other Aveline that the you'll, Deceiver you'll note is that looking the for. Other dolls that were in the town inside of the Dreadplane around mm -hmm. Tornor Castle, they looked different. They take on the features yeah. of the soul that is used to create them. So yeah, out of character note for um, everyone, and if Aveline explains it, explains it, she explains it, but her type of Undaunted is not like a regular Undaunted, which is born of a soul that is basically cleansed of its older memories and respun through Emirnian's wheel. Instead, Aveline sacrificed herself while living, and her soul, still raw with her memories, her, uh, you know, characteristics, was then stuffed into the doll. So, a very... It, it's a, it's... It's an action very closely, for people who have Arcana trained, it's an action very closely related to what would be considered vile magic or necromantic, like bad magic. Because there's good necromantic, but there's also real bad. And this is right there on that. Hmm. Bad TM. Mm hmm. Uh, I mean. You know, we don't have to go on this wild Aveline chase if we don't want to. Do we want to? Wild Aveline chase. Aveline. <laughs> Aveline. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's not as bad as Barry, though, so bear with me. Wouldn't that have been funny if Nodder's name was Barry? Oh my yeah, God. that would have been funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Barry the Bear Barian. No. <laughs> oh my god. These puns are unbearable. <laughs> it was the obvious pun. I expect better of you, Elizabeth. Me? I didn't say anything. Wait, who said that? Was that? Oh my that god. Was that was Stephanie. Stephanie. Apologies. I wasn't looking <laughs> at the I've screen. made enough bear puns in my time that I'm letting that. I, one I will I will point out, typically, uh, Elizabeth, when you do switch into pun telling mode, you do kind of go for like a more kind of dry delivery, which I, do. I believe Stephanie was just doing. So I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't differentiate. I was tricked. I'm bamboozled. Anywho. Okay. So we're here, and we have a new, another Aveline to find. That is an option. That is something an you option. can do. I mean, there's there's plenty of things. I mean, if you want to take a second and like you know go to a cafe, sit down and think about what the options are here. But mm. obviously, mission accomplished regarding the deliver the um, opera singer mm. away from Montulay Treachery. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you want to remain here in Onamath, learn more about the town, explore it? That's an option. Is there anything in Onamath that you want to do? The only quest leads that were kind of present were the Jai stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you could drive back to Nock. There was definitely stuff to be done there. Um, if you want to, you know, uh, head up to um, Nightfang Pass, that's an option. You were told that would be a struggle. It's not going to be something easy to do. Um, yeah, there's plenty of stuff that you've kind of seen and done. It's just dependent on what you want to kind of act on. If we go back to Nock, are they going to arrest us? Don't know. You know, I'm a little uh, hesitant to go back to Nock. 
yeah. for reasons. I'm not very familiar with uh, land peoples. Land peoples is that preferable to to land? What was the other one? Land. Land lovers. Land lovers. I don't think I was saying land. Lo- it was I something. don't think you were. Uh, that was you, the only thing can, I could uh, think of. You can, uh, that the proper term here is actually uh, Earth Strider. <laughs> Earth Striders. I love yeah. that. No one says that. No one says that. Stop making things. Belroth. (laughs) Enough with this SJW. Uh, So, um, I'm I'm not sure about the ways on land. Uh, I wonder if it would be a good idea to not go back to Nock for a while and let the uh, the heat uh, cool away, so to speak. Eh, probably. Okay. So, um, you're at a cafe. I mean, there's definitely opportunities for you to try and kind of glean some, you know, understanding of, like, what's going on in town. Maybe some activity that can keep you busy while you wait. Um, or if you have something that you're more, you have more pressing to do, you can definitely engage on that. I mean, as long as we don't get involved with the uh, Kendo people, mm-hmm. not not interested in that. <laughs> okay. At least for Sen. I mean, do you, do you want to kind of get some more information? I mean, again, the Kendo's not bad. Like they are assassins mm-hmm. and murderers. And remember that um, uh, Ashuna was a member of the Kendo in good standing. Um, she was kind of betrayed in some way, like, and kind of mm-hmm. given over, but she wasn't... She said she was going back to the Kengo. Like, it wasn't... They're not seeking you out trying to murder you or anything. Right. But it just seems like they, um... They don't fuck around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But... Yeah. And Sin would know that and be wary of that. Absolutely fine. I mean, do you want to try and just, like, get some information about what's going on with them? Maybe, like... You know, it's not as bad Why, as you markings, think. Markings well, are everywhere. That would pr- uh, uh, that mainly would prove that they run the town. So there are no right. other gangs or associations that are affiliated here because mm-hmm. the Kengo's business runs the town when it comes okay. to like thieves guild shit. Um, right. Any smuggling that goes through on a mouth is handled by them, and any you know hits that are put out need to be put through them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. But you could try and, like, you know, find a contact, get some information about, like, what the goings-ons are there, and then decide whether or not you want to deal with it or not. The same is true for Namalia. It does appear that there is a druid presence here. And if you remember from last session, they do seem to have a safe haven somewhere in the south. Near Ocean's Mouth. Yeah, I mean, if... If we're going to be here for a little while, um, Namalia would be okay with taking a day to uh, okay. do a little investigating. Okay. So it's not too late in the day. Like I said, you were you, you, you kind of woke up, jumped right into it, started looking around. It's probably about lunchtime. So you're sitting at the cafe. You have a simple repast, and you can kind of plan your day accordingly and you know engage in activities. So... If, Let's just go through it. Namalia, it sounds like you're wanting to go to Ocean's uh, Mouth and find out this Druid Enclave, see if there's anything to it. Druid Circle, rather. Correct? Correct. Okay. And then, um, Sen, just to make sure I'm not, I don't want to push you in that direction. If it's not something you want to do, don't do it. But uh, it sounds like you yeah. might want to kind of just tip the toe in the water and see if, like, the Gengo, you know, how their operations kind of work here without getting too involved or kind of outing yourself. Yeah. yeah, if anything, at least trying to glean um, how to not piss them off here. Okay. Um, Belroth, you are a cell sword. the obvious. You are a cell sword. There is lots of opportunities for things to happen here for a cell sword. I mean, there's never not work for someone who can beat the shit out of someone. Yay! Um, so, yeah, there's options for you to kind of, like, you know... Uh, 
ferry around and kind of see, you know, uh, who would be of interest to talk to. Or you can, you know, hang out with one of your allies here. Like, if there's any ideas that you might have, again, you don't know much about the town's layout, but if there's something you'd think in a town you'd want to try and investigate, you know, we can explore that. Yeah, I'll probably just pick up some jobs. Okay, see what you can't do. All right. Um, okay, so you're going to search around to see where you can't get a job for a sellsword. Okay. Um, Terry, um, <laughs> finding money is, uh, well, something that you definitely strive to do, but, um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you definitely know from your encounter in the... Uh, um, uh, my brain is not working. The Farrier's Estates, um, that there are people of like minds present um, in the town, um, in the city, rather. And uh, you also know, based on what they explained, that uh, you're probably a person of interest back in the city of Nock. Um, I don't know if Terry's brain is doing what my brain would be doing in that situation uh, as a permanent relocation. Permanent relocation. Permanent relocation. <laughs> yeah, uh, having found that out, Terry's gonna... Hmm. Terry might actually offer to, if Sen accepts, to go with her because he doesn't want the rest of the group to know that he's uh, interested in finding out some, uh, let's just call it darker knowledge. Too late for that, buddy. You took me to the well. Oh, you're, oh, shoot you. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> you took me with you to your creepy sideways store at the bottom of the well. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. I for Crap. He's telling everyone. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I said, Namalia, are there any secrets? My presumption is that Belroth was like, oh, also, Terry fucking... <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, the, that this case, Terry guy. Terry Terry's gonna try to make some leather. Hold on, hold on. Terry's There's lots to, of leather people. Terry's, gonna, Terry's try. gonna try to. Oh, I didn't know you two were into that kind of thing. <laughs> He's gonna try to do his uh, usual grifting, make some money, okay. and then uh, in the process, maybe try to see it if if I can. Maybe see if I could uh, get a little small residence here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you understand that property prices aren't exactly cheap. So it just depending on what you've got currency wise. Um, if you're looking for a rental, that might be possible. Um, but uh, it, it will be kind of a lengthy contract. Keep that in mind. We'll deal with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Aveline, um, if you have anything of interest that you specifically want to do on your own, you can do it. Um, or you can tag team with other people. Your call. Sorry, I was getting food. Have we discussed what everyone else is doing? Yeah, so Namalia is heading to um, the Low Town and Ocean's Mouth to find um, something that she is kind of looking for. Belaroth is going to try and get some jobs doing some work, uh, you know, manual labor. Um, the uh, oh. <laughs> Sen. <laughs> Sen is planning on um, uh, fishing for information regarding the rival gang that's present in this uh, place. Um, Terry is going to be doing his typical shit, um, trying to trick people out of hard-earned coin or uh, wealth. And uh, that leaves you. And again, the table is yours. Feel free to do whatever you want. If you wanted to walk right back over to the doll maker and have a conversation with them without anybody present, that's an option. If you wanted to ah. walk straight up to the castle of this place and try and enter into the Lordly Estates, also fine. Like where the the the, the entire town is your oyster effectively. And if there's something in your mind that you'd think, oh, this is probably in a town and I'd like to do this, voice that opinion, voice that uh, idea, and we'll see if we can make it uh, you know reality or uh, uh, okay, fake reality. I didn't know if the doll maker had come back from the uh, dread plane. Well, you've been at lunch, so you're not sure, like, if he's come back or not. But, I mean, the best way to find out would be to just head back over there. Yeah, I'll do some more. Because I am a little bit curious about the statue stuff and just everything. Everything's weird. Sure. So, I'm going to go do some investigating. Okay. Um, okay, perfect. So, we have everybody set up, lined up, and ready to knock them down. Terry, your business is pretty easy, as is Belroth's. Uh, Terry, go ahead and make a persuasion roll. 
Persuasion. 16. Okay. You spend the rest of the afternoon kind of working through the towns. You know the Farrier's Estates is a pretty good place based on what you've seen for people who have money and are trying to spend it. So you go over that way, you do some charlatan, you know, style kind of things, selling things that are obviously not, you know, worth anything, but you definitely kind of polish them or gloss them up to be something of note, like snake oil mode entirely. Um, and you manage to make around... 600 gold pieces in that time as well uh you do note that there are rooms that are associated with the many mouths tavern which you've been in um and it's pretty much the best place to kind of rent out of uh, because first of all you can get anywhere from there and second of all um they rent for the day effectively like an inwood um if you want to pay in advance they will rent to you an entire six day for three gold pieces. If you are just renting for an evening, though, you'll have to pay five silver pieces per night. Oh, yeah. I'll just uh, get a whole six day for three. Okay. Perfect. So you're sorted. And then, Balroth, mm -hmm. um, you are engaging in activities um, differently. Uh, you need to make an intimidation roll. Okay. You go to the Farrier's Estate and start asking merchants if there's anybody who's looking for any strong arm work um, or any mercenary style work. A couple of merchants say that they've uh, got a couple of people um, who aren't exactly paying their dues regarding the merchant skill that's present inside the Farrier's Estate. So they ask you to accompany them to go and acquire these dues. And surely um, you are very helpful a massive fighter who can summon forward a inky dragon version of themselves is um, scary, to say the least. Um, they manage to acquire the wealth that they were due, um, and they grant you a percentage of that. Uh, the percentage total for you equals out to a total of 1,000 gold pieces. They would do quite a bit. Oh, damn! That's a lot of motorcycle parts. Okay. Belroth handled. Um, let's see. Um, let's go with Sen first. Uh, Sen, um, you start kind of trying to, you know, uh, ferret out a contact. Um, eventually, you do manage to kind of draw the attention of an individual. A uh, young, plucky, um, Sarah Eugen male um, who kind of comes out to you says, uh, Hey, um... Uh, seeing you looking around and asking questions, are you, um... And he makes a hand cant, which you would notice is him marking you as a mardigan. Nod. Well, we don't mind you too much, just as long as you're not trying to set up shop or anything. Um... Are you Mostly looking... visiting and trying to stay out of trouble. Well, we don't get into a lot of trouble here. Unfortunately, the watch is, um... Very, very skillful. Um, we do get into a lot of business on the ports, though. Um, that being said, uh, you're just trying to get out of trouble and you said looking for information? Mostly, yeah. Well, what, do you like, what would you like to know? Um, well, there's quite a big presence here. Um, Not terrible. I mean... 100 or so. That's not bad. Not for uh, a city of this size. Yeah. So, do you, um, do you guys have a lot that, uh, needs protecting around here? Have a lot of trouble? Just We mostly curious. put up the signs for protection racketing to make sure that the merchants stay in line. Some of the guilds, um, don't exactly like um our um methods um and um the main thing is is that the people who don't pay are targets to other people who may want to get them out of the way so most pay um we had a bit of an issue not too long ago where an outside hitter came in and dealt with the problem a very annoying matter um some elvish assassin from the enclaves up north um we almost caught her, 
Um, she escaped, I believe, to the big city. Hmm. That's a problem we would like to deal with. Find her. Some elvish woman named... I can't remember her name. Fair enough. Maybe I can help with that. I'm we're from also, Nox, so... We're also missing one of our blade-blooded woman has been gone for some time. She, um... Ashuna. You say her name before he says it? Yeah. He knows his head. How did you know that name? Uh, well, I thought she was really cool, but, uh, I think I know the people who, uh, killed her. Every single piece of information you have on this matter, I would like. Certainly. Uh, give him the information that I know about, uh... Yeah, sure. Ashuna and the dealings from the Red Daggers that we fought, and then when you mention when you mention Red Daggers, he goes, oh, "I'm glad we got them out of this town. They were right. giving us <laughs> they were giving us such a problem for some time. You say you dealt with them everywhere else. Great. And then you were going to okay. say the last bit. Um, and then uh. The connection with, uh, fuck, what's his name? Um, uh, the dragon uh, guy. Uh, Emmer something or other. Ekstrom. Hmm. And then the potential yeah. connection with Ekstrom, the Montelays, and, uh, Endemon. Interesting. Um, it's all connecting. <laughs> I will bring this information forward. Um, I know that the uh, Blade of... Um, and he mentions the name of a city um, north of here, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but you've heard this contact before. It was the Blade that actually trained um, Ashuna. Um, and uh, he says that he'll get the information before them um, as soon as possible. And um, that might uh, mean that there's... Uh, Eyes turned in that direction. Um, Fair enough. Any other information that you're looking for? Um, hearing about the guy who trained Ashuna, does he teach that little like knife thing? Because that's really cool. Becoming a blade blooded is a technique that um, can be learned by some. Um, I don't believe that he is taking any students at this time, especially ones that are not even affiliated with the Kengo proper. Um, what I would advise is if you make it back to the city of Nock, um, you can invest in um, seeking, if you have a friend who's an arcanist, uh, knowledge regarding a spell known as Phantom Knife. I believe that is the name of the spell in the common tongues. Hmm. Good to know. She did not give me that information. Hmm. Well, being a blade-blooded, she probably tried to keep it from you. Fair enough. I just thought it was really cool. It's pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> Since, like, that's uh, the only magic thing that they like. <laughs> Blades from hands? Yes, please. <laughs> um, If you have no other questions, they do grant you the opportunity yeah. to act and function in this town to a limited degree. So you can perform, like, you know, thievely things if you'd like in this town uh, without seeking any kind of uh, request. This is uh, compensation for the information you've granted. So you can ba you basically have free reign of the town so long as it's not fucking with the Kengo. Um, mm. And uh, that's in... Yeah, that there you go. Um, okay, cool. moving from you to Namalia. Namalia, you uh, you know take a little bit of a walk to the south side of the town, um, heading into uh, Lowtown. Um, it's quite a bit of a journey. Um, the paths are kind of... Um, uh, built in such a way to not just directly go to it. It's more kind of like a go around the hill kind of situation. Um, but when you finally make it to Lowtown, you see a lot more indicators of uh, druidic markings. Um, eventually, um, you do find um, a small dock um, with a building similar to the building you saw inside of Landsmouth, which is the kind of token receptacle uh, position um, where all of the vehicles are stored. Um, you'd see a small single pier, um, and, uh, 
the markings on it seem to indicate that uh, whatever you're looking for, this druidic safe space, is at the end of the pier. Uh, yeah, uh, she would approach the edge of the pier. Okay. Um, you can see that there are, you know, a couple of small crafts kind of below you. You're probably a good 20 feet off of the ground when you kind of get out uh, to the edge of the pier. Um, and, uh, you know, you can hear the water just kind of lightly wrestling against the um, the wooden pillars beneath you. Um, it definitely does sound like there is movement going on beneath you, though. And when you kind of peer out to investigate it, uh, you would notice a series of rocks that have been, or that are positioned inside of the circle of large tree trunks uh, that have been utilized as the uh, pillars of the um, uh, the pier that you're on. Uh, the tree trunks seem to have branches growing out of them closer to the waterline. And then at the base of the waterline, you can see barnacles like covering them entirely. So it appears that these trees seem to be still growing. It's just at a certain point, they kind of don't have branches and are nothing more than structural supports for the pier. Uh, sitting on the rocks, you can see a couple of people uh, just casually, just in a meditative state. Uh, looking at them from up here, you can't really tell who or what they are, um, but you've seen circles like this before. Um, yeah, I guess. So this is below the pier? Correct. Or, yeah. Okay, so I would approach. Okay. So are you just diving off of the pier, or are you coming back down to the uh, like shoreline and then going to swim out that way? Uh, might as well just dive right into the water. Okay. Um, as you leap, you kind of change your legs free from you know the land form into um, the tentacle mass and slam into the water, swim you know gracefully to them. Um, as you approach, you can see kind of stepping out from behind the tree, standing on the water. A dryad, which you've s kind of come to understand before, but it appears that one of the trees in this circle that's underneath the pier appears to be a residence, an oak tree for uh, a dryad. The dryad steps out before you. Uh, in Sylvan, uh, she says, You come unannounced and uninvited, but not unknown. The studies of the mysteries are currently in effect. We are a circle of dreams. We seek to see beyond the mouths of this place, into the great beyond. I don't want to interrupt you. You may join us. When that... I... Oh, hold on, sorry. A quick, quick, uh, okay. quick bit of understanding. When she says that, you can tell that she is not saying it. It seems that the circle druids are saying it through her. Mm. Okay. Um. I would like to join you, uh, my siblings in. Uh, the druidic traditions. The uh, dryad kind of kneels down, again, not breaking the water, seems to be walking uh, neatly on the surface of the water, gestures uh, her hand to you, and then casually guides you over to a rock, unladen of a druid uh, meditator. Um, offers it out to you. Um, you kind of sweep up onto it, tentacles kind of massing out over it, taking kind of a low stance. You can see the stance that they're in. You understand the ritual very quickly and can enter into uh, this druidic kind of um, uh, positioning. Now, I will note, uh, this is a rule that I have, but not a lot of druids have explored because for some reason, every druid that I've ever had in my games besides you is always solo YOLO and doesn't really care about like anything about their class or tradition. The druidic class feature is the most wasted feature ever. That being said, I will let you know that if you find circles of other 
uh, subclass nature, like a circle of dreams, mm -hmm. with a day's worth of preparation, you can shift your circle to the circle of the new one. So it is an option that I afford druids to allow them a bit of mobility within the balance. But again, just something I'm pointing out for future reference, not so much for now, because um, as you kind of enter into this trance, um, you enter into a dream space. Uh, the dream space seems to be kind of uh, a bright uh, orange color, like sunset. The water here seems to be rushing much faster, like waves are kind of breaking against the uh, wood and the stone that you are on. Very much different than the mid-afternoon kind of atmosphere you were in before. Um, you see the others who are kind of standing on the water nearby, talking amidst one, uh, one another, and they seem to be kind of looking up uh, the riverway, the, uh, the causeway here. Um, one of them turns to look back at you, and you kind of get an idea of the four that you're looking at here uh, a bit more um, uh, keenly. Uh, one of them appears to be a, a wild, or I'm sorry, yeah, a wildling, um, which is a fake creature that um, is basically a walking, talking plant person. Um, that's the best description I can give you. Uh, <laughs> the um, other three, one of them is a human, and the other two are elves. The elves appear to be kind of northern in nature to you, um, not too dissimilar from... Gosh, you haven't really encountered many elves in this game. Um, they look like northerner elves, kind of a, a bit more kind of um, you know ruddy in skin tone, um, and a bit more surly in kind of composure than your uh, city elves that you've seen so far. Um, but they're talking, um, and the uh, wildling kind of turns back to, um, you know, greet you, um, in his voice, uh, he says, um, and it, you can see that in this dream space, he speaks without, um, he speaks without moving any mouth, um, and, uh, his words are, uh, inviting. He says, come speak with us. We are discussing a very important matter. Um, uh, Namalia will, um, uh, express her gratitude and respectfully approach, uh, kind of, you know, ready to listen and learn. Okay. They say, hail, uh, wanderer. Um, they turn and look to you. Uh, one of them, um, the elves kind of looks to you and says, are you trackless? And... Uh, again, out of character note, um, for merfolk, a trackless is someone who does not have a tribe uh, in the merfolk community. Uh, yes. Interesting. A number, great number of your people have become trackless, due in part to the horrible atrocities committed at sea. The sea has become a hostile place, and the balance has come undone. The uh, human says, a battlefield even. Indeed. So it would seem the eye, the lady, and two other shadows that we have not been able to uncover here. Many of your people have gone up this river up this causeway and headed inland. I am wary. Rumors are that the waterways that lead into the marshes to the west lead to a great lake. But if the rumors are true, a massive dragon turtle swallows up all who would try and dwell within. The human finished speaking. The elf says, no, it is not so. That dragon turtle just... <laughs> That dragon turtle disappeared five years ago. It's no longer an issue. They should be more than safe. The human shrugs. Well, at least they'll be safe then. A number of the tribesmen of the coast have had their entire livelihoods and civilizations destroyed by the lady. 
she wandered north, past the Silver Fang Mountains. The, wild the lady herself? The wildling says, yes, we, we saw her. We saw her in dreams. She passed beyond into the fold. The um, a human says, this one does not know what the fold is. It is deep lore of our circle. The wildling says, oh, I... And then the human raises his hand and says, it is all right. The knowledge has been placed onto the table. We should allow her to pick it up. The fold is a space beyond this, well, rather that, and gestures towards, like, the world around him, that reality, that which is not in this space, nor the space you came from. It is a space beyond that, a space beyond all. I can show you, if you would like. Show me. Please. You see him kind of place his hands over his eyes and then kind of draw them down. And as he does so, his eyes start glowing bright purple. And it's kind of all that you can see. The sunset turns bright purple. The waterways turn bright purple. Just this absolutely just beautiful kind of royal purple coloration before it all just starts toning to black and fading away. It almost feels like the water drops out from underneath you and everything just kind of falls away. But you still look down and can see that you're standing on water. It's just now that the water, the water is no longer kind of rushing and wave-like. It's completely still. He then kind of looks to you and gestures off in the distance. And then he says, it is fortunate. My positioning was subjectively perfect. And in the darkness, you can see something kind of moving. Serpent Lake. Very, very massive, but very far away. Is that the lady? I believe that is. She is moving. South. She moves south through the fold. What's so her destination? So it would seem. If I had to venture a guess, it might be the woods of Kyr. It could very well be Duskrot. Or as far as Sunfast. It just depends on who is calling her. Terry. Oh, sorry. That was out of character. He's never communicated with the lady of the deep. <laughs> Out of character. He tried. I, I, I've never managed to actually communicate with her. The only message that he's ever received is, give me the pearls. But anyway. Which he has failed to do. <laughs> you see it kind of roiling. And then as um, you're kind of looking out to it, you see two other things that are kind of interesting to, to note. Um, it seems walking near her, the massive swarm or like slug like thing with uh, tendrils uh, burning through the waterways around it, causing it to hiss and splash with kind of steam. Um, but standing not too far from that is a woman, bright red hair, humanoid, you know, surface dwelling looking. Um, she appears to have kind of bright leathery wings on her back. Her arms are crossed, and she seems to just be standing there, kind of idly walking alongside the Lady of the Deep. Um, and uh, circling overhead the Lady of the Deep are a number of these strange rings that appear to be made out of meat, like actual like red, kind of bright red, bloody meat. But on the outside of the rings, you can see that there are eyes, and these rings seem to be kind of spinning after the Lady of the Deep. Some of them like have connected into like these strange oscillating ring patterns. Others are just single rings that are kind of following after her. Um, there's probably a dozen or so of these like kind of globules of ring eye meat rings that are kind of following it. Rose. Well, that's nefarious. We. 
understand that the eyes are the ones that come from the beyonder, the one from outside of this space. And they seem to be keeping an eye on her. For some reason. Their battle, I assume, will happen in time. This imbalance cannot be allowed to happen. Where the fight will happen, I hope it is not in the natural world. It's almost as if he doesn't notice the red woman. The redhead. Do you see her? Looks over that way. I... I see the the monster and the things that tail it. I do not see a red head. Uh Namalia would describe what she's saying. By the way, is this is this one of the sisters? No. Okay. No. Uh, if you had to if you had a ferret I guess, it matches the description of the woman that Sophia played on stage. The Demon Prince of Lust, Felicia and a guy. Okay. And just as you're kind of like realizing that, you see the guy who you're with kind of stop as if frozen in space. The water <gasps> rippling from your feet stop. The Lady of the Deep stop. The ring spinning stop. And the woman kind of turn, not locked by whatever stopping everything else. And she looks at you. She starts walking. The water does not move underneath her feet. She sees you, and she smiles. I've been bound here for so long. Finally. Someone who can see me being dragged away from my reality. Well, I don't know if you are one who is kindly, but I must explain to you my circumstance. If you wish to leave, though, you can break this dream by waking up. Ah, uh, Namalia, do not wish to interact. I, um, I know that it would be hard to trust someone you have recognized as being what I am. But I assure you, I speak no lies when I tell you that if you do not aid me in this, a greater evil will fill my seat. And you will be made to deal with it instead. You wish to be freed. Mm -hmm. To preserve a greater balance. I am the Demon Prince of Lust. I rule over my gate. I have done so for hundreds of years, ever since I stood alongside the Grey Order at the signing of the Covenant of the Ascended. And you see like a flash of dreams kind of rush you suddenly. You watch as you see figures from history kind of standing there, along with deities that you've seen in statue, but are standing there physically with this woman. And she appears to be in good graces with everyone present. You see flashes of horrible debauchery happening inside of her sin-filled gate. Um, and you watch as she seems to be negotiating the balances between the 13 gates of Ashtar. And she reverts back into this kind of liminal space, this darkness, this void. Um, and uh, looks to you. I rule at the apex of my sin. Only those who are absolute lechers deserve to be in my presence. However, there are aspects of lust that I do not pursue because I believe that they are impure representations of my sin. Others who would fill my role when my time expires, would utilize these impurities to 
just generally fuck the material plane. That's not my desires at all. And I believe problems are already arising as my lieutenants are attempting to take my throne. I can see into your service thoughts. You were thinking about me, but you were also thinking about three others. The names kind of flash in your head, and you can hear her reciting them, and you can also hear your own internal monologue saying the names out loud as she's saying them. You've met them in person, but you've not truly met them. Know this. I rule for balance. Something I believe someone of your knowledge base can understand and enjoy. If you wish to take me up on my offer and allow me my freedom, all you have to do is say yes. If you need time to think about it, the next time you'll be seeing me is scarred out across the back of that thing as it re-enters the material plane in the land of Ta at the command of those three sisters. So, yes or no? Okay, Namalia is emotionally, intellectually, spiritually unprepared for this moment. <laughs> um, no, she can't make that call. If you say no in your head, and that's the feeling that you're pushing towards, everything reverts back to normal, like kind of time, traffic, space, and side of the void. And then you can see that uh, the uh, individual is kind of shaking you, and you can feel the void kind of falling away as you return back onto that rock. And he is physically kind of on your rock, kind of shaking you back in <sighs> real space. And he says, you said, you said you saw a redhead. Are you okay? Uh, the prince, the, uh, the infernal prince of lust, Demons are entering into the dream space? He kind of looks confused. I, I was hoping it was nothing more than a connection with the drow enclave, but no, this is terrible. He said she's been trapped there. Oh. Well, what did she do with you? She wanted me to bust her out. I declined... I think you made the right choice. I hope so, but I think she fully intends to break out soon. Uh, I think the the um, the lines of communication between our enclaves, our circles, uh, should be utilized to spread a warning. We have a connection not too far from here. Um... An Oread up in the uh, mountains near Nightbane. We can communicate with her. The Fish. Lady of the Deep is coming. We are aware. Do you know where she will be coming? The demon who guides her said, Ta. Uh, I don't know if that was a lie, but that is what she said. There's only three places it could come out. In the lands of Ta. Drungrulung. The Hreeb Enclave's most sacred shrine. Or the gates beneath Sippert's Pass. I will do what I can to see if we can't find out where it might be coming up. Out of character, we did encounter the sisters at Sifers at Pass. At Sifers Pass. 
uh, Namali would pass that on just as additional info. I will mobilize our circle. I will call for your circle's aid and all the circles we can glean aid from. We will reach out to the Rebound Clave and we will do what we can to move against Sippert's Pass then. The rumors of Sippert's sword might be more dire than we had initially anticipated. Thank you, Wanderer. Uh, cut Thank from... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just feel like I've aged like five years. <laughs> You're welcome. Cut from... <laughs> That oh my god. To Aveline. Aveline, yours is actually the most brisk um, in its time lapse because you don't have to travel anywhere. You literally, after everyone breaks up, you're just kind of sitting there at the cafe and go, oh, okay, well, <laughs> and just walk right back over to um, that area. You do see the doll maker. Um, he seems to be standing with, um, you know, people. It seems that they're continuing that kind of weird uh, socializing thing that was happening before. And, uh, he sees you approaching and uh, smiles to the people that he's talking to, very quickly kind of leaves them um, to whatever they were doing and moves away from them to allow for you to kind of engage him directly. Um, once you do so, he says, you have questions, I'm sure. She just really kind of just looks a little bit puzzled, um, but knowing she kind of like she trusts Namalia and knows that Namalia is not dumb so and like knowing what she said and everything she's kind of like well this is clearly not the same person as what you know I knew um but she kind of tells him like you're not the person I thought you were but um he crosses his arms I don't really says, know it that is not entirely true as I understand it, you, the one that stands before me, and others, were responsible in destroying something that I was made a part of. Not me who stands before you, but me from an older time. Many of us were stripped of a semblance of being negative aspect and id of our personage. Those were the things that were made to aid Gothias in his space. I am aware of this because when that place was destroyed and all who were within it were recast, I was cast out. You see, I learned very quickly due to a lapse of that lost self and a reattunement with it, what I had been doing in that space. I am not a creature of balance, I am a creature of absolute moral good. That which was taken from me was corrupted, and the memories that I see the memories that you seem to fear are mine now. I know what happened. I saw what I did. Come on. He gestures towards the shrine. All right. <laughs> you step into the space and you can see the femur bone um, that you've seen before. It was one of the relics you took up and raised uh, uh, to arms against Goliaths. The door shuts behind you very shortly after, not suddenly, not jarringly, just kind of very briskly and calmly. And he uh, looks to it. Saint Markov. Tell me what you know about him. <clears throat> out of character, I'm going to be real straight with you. I forgot about Saint Markov. <laughs> and you know what? Out of character, there were never really any notes that were put forward to it, other than he was someone of religious importance inside of this dread plane space. So, so he nods. The funny thing about that is, me too. I don't recall him either. But this is not some trinket or bauble. 
this holds great power, potent, holy energy. Whoever St. Markov was, the fact that I know nothing of them and can find nothing of them, even with the memories I was granted of my other self, it annoys me. Do you think maybe, do you think a St. Markov is real? <laughs> well, there's this femur bone. And from all I can tell, it is a, an actual living creature's remnant. It is not an artifice. If you'd like to inspect it, you can. All research Sorry. I can do on the item has been completed. I know not what I can do forward. She's just kind of like the gears are kind of spinning in her head. Um, she's just like... She has gears well, in her head? <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's just like, well, it could be that this doesn't actually belong to a St. Markov. Um, maybe it belongs to somebody else of importance. Or maybe somehow the St. Markov was erased from history, if that's possible. I suppose it's very possible. You see, another thing that complicates things. He looks around, and uh, as he's kind of doing so, you see him kind of start to glow. His wings kind of blossom out of his back. His halo appears, and he kind of places his hand on his chin as he kind of grows to like a 10-foot height. I am eternal. I have been fighting in the material plane, in the astral sea, in this space that you destroyed all of these worlds for as long as anyone has taken words down to paper. This should not be a matter that I am confused by, but yet it is. I cannot form the connection. You see, the statue outside, which was recovered from the ruins of Nightbang Pass, was a piece that was taken from a citadel far north of here, kept outside of its gates. It was brought to Nightbang Pass when Golthias was forced to relocate from the Westerlands to the coast before he and all who served Ashmedea were destroyed in this timeline. Gothias wanted the things that he had during his last moments back, and he rose to take his citadel back, rose to take his lands in the Westerlands back, rose and gave the Bitterhearts an opportunity to fight against the Aeten menace that fought against Ashmedea's forces, the servants of elves. But he died. He died of the magics that were of this natural world. He was lanced with a twig. It blossomed into a tree, and he was left there for it. Uh, and then suddenly, kind of like, Aveline kind of remembers the last thing that, like, the Nega uh, Golthias said before he died um, about something about an elf to Aveline. Um, she just kind of looks, like, confused a little bit, but... As you're thinking on that thought, that train of thought's actually really good, you have another memory, and this one is stranger still. You remember a very quick flash of blades and being kind of locked down, broken apart. You don't remember how it happened. It was all very sudden. And in the span of what your memory seems to cognizant as kind of like a, a flash or a long time, you're not sure, you feel a hand grasping your head, looking down into your eyes. And when your eyes open up fully to see who it is, you see Golthias. And the only thing about this memory is, is that you know you were broken at the time. 
And you also know that he was horribly wounded. And then your eyes close past that point, this strange flash of a memory. You don't know where it happened, when it happened, but you know where you were when it did happen. And it was the same spot you were found when you were reassembled by the party. <clears throat> the um, angel She's kind just of... She's just kind of sitting there with one hand on her hip and then like the other one's like this. The, the angel kind of looks to you seems you are going through quite a bit yourself. What I can tell you is, is that I know a process. And if you are, as I understand the histories, to be an artificer, there is a means for you to incorporate the memories of this other one into your own. These words are between you and I. And he goes through the process and explains to you how, again, out of character note, effectively it's basically pull out CPU, put CPU in. But yeah, you have to kill her to do it. Um, but you can basically take her memories for your own. Um, and then he explains why he tells you to do this here and tells you to tell no one else. Demons and other angels beyond wish for this knowledge to be taken up. Gothias wishes for this knowledge to be learned so that he can perfect the art that you were, that he feels he has failed in. He wishes to rebuild what he had before, when he served the demon prince of greed. Not as her servant any longer. He does not wish to do so in a horrid fashion, from what I understand. But it is troubling to me that the very visage of his bride-to-be in that space was brought to me by you and yours to be safeguarded. If you go from this place, I have a contact that you can reach out to if you wish to try and find more information about Nightfang Pass and Gothias's presence and what he's been doing since he's been reborn. You may know her. Safira, the druid of the wilds. Yeah, she was with our party for some time. After engaging with you, she sought me out. Apparently she recognized me when we met on that other place. If you wish to find her, she spends a lot of her time at the Erdelatz Ranch, south of the city of Nock. Any other questions for the angel? Um, I would just like to exchange contact information with him since I feel like he's a trustworthy person. He doesn't have person. a phone. Uh, well, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> He says that he wishes to reach out. What about an Outlook contact card? Oh, he doesn't have like a business card, like. <laughs> oh no, like a like a, I don't know, schematic for a summoning circle. Um, you would know that. Um, let's see. You would know that you are capable of. Um. You should be capable of returning here with very little effort if you're going to go to the city of Nock. It's only a couple hours away. So you know where he resides, and he's typically here. Um, he doesn't leave the city of Onamau. Um, he explains to you because of its very strange gated nature, it's very hard for anyone to find anyone here um, without really knowing what they're looking for. But yeah, um, unfortunately, he does not have a, okay. a calling stone. Okay, she'll very formally kind of like want to like shake hands with him and just kind of like acknowledge that uh, she considers him like an ally. Okay. Yeah, and he um, uh, explains that, um, I mean, 
he explains to you what you already know. The Deceiver on the other side of the portal wants to have the other you for purposes. Purposes related to the new master of that dread plane, Hero Rockscale. You would know that you now have a purpose for wanting her. And apparently Golfias has a purpose for wanting her. So, so three, pe three people are... Want, want the evil you, yes. Okay. And one of those three people is you. Right. Okay. Who so, do you trust? <laughs> if everyone kind of reconvenes, um, I mean, again, uh, settings or calling stones are obviously a thing. Um, if the if the goal is to reconvene, um, I would assume it'd be for kind of like uh, evening time, kind of repast. The thing that trips you out the most, Amalia, is as you're kind of moving into this town and kind of uh, looking out to shore, the sunset's identical to the one that was present in the dream space, bright orange. Beautiful blue green waves. <laughs> I pretend I do not see. Does not exist. <laughs> um, but yeah, did you reconvene? Um, the cafe wasn't too bad. Uh, they do appear to have a, a dinner menu. Um, there are other places you could go to the Many Mouths. They do have meat on the menu or meat on the bar. Um, however, you'd like to proceed. For the first time in this entire adventure, <laughs> Amalia orders a drink, <laughs> like a hard, a hard liquor, and uh, sips it, it carefully. Uh, and you know, not she doesn't like, whoosh, but she's kind of like, uh... so you meet at the many mouths. You find a table. Um, you can go and order at the bars and bring them to your table as you please. Plenty of meat, plenty of uh, beer, plenty of s uh, smoke. Um, but you reconvene. Great. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Proceed as you like. Everyone else have fun. Are we all together? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Aveline just looks like she's having an existential crisis. So is Namalia. <laughs> so I went and got us a place to stay for like a week. Meanwhile, oh, Belroth nice. just looks like super freaking happy. Like he just went to Disney World. He's like, yeah, I got to intimidate some people and blah, blah, blah. And they gave me money for it too. <laughs> So you're buying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. How much for the whole? Yeah, if you're buying a meal's worth of food, it's probably going to be about 20 gold pieces. Like beer, okay. you know, smoke, and uh, meat. It's, yeah, 20 gold for the lot. Right. Uh, Belroth, dear, I'll, I'll take another drink. <laughs> Aveline okay. puts her hand up to, like... <laughs> He's like, all right, whatever, as he orders, like, five plates of food for himself. 25 gold. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, perfectly fair. Um, but, yeah, you... Um, how do you like to proceed? So, um, you know, as Terry is sharing about uh, the... You know, the, the apartment that he's renting, um, Belroth talks about his good old time, like, busting skulls. But not really, right? Just intimidating. No. Uh, pretending. Um, just pretending. <laughs> uh, Namalia will start sharing her experience the circle and like all of the druidic things and not really letting on that it's like about this horrible shit until she gets to the part where it's, it's like oh by the way i saw the fucking hashtag demon spit take. um <laughs> does namalia <laughs> mention that she saw the lady yeah yeah and uh, she will be very, uh, very, you know, pointed about fearing uh, the lady and 
the havoc that she might wreak on innocent people if what they was she doing? bust free. She was traveling, Terry. Where Where to? Squid octopus dog thing. Traveling to the land of Ta, where uh, our dear friend Noder lives, and uh, probably gonna bust out in uh, in Shifford's Pass if you know. I mean, there's probably no no better place or more, no likelier place from what I've learned. So right now, the Druidic Network is activating uh, to prepare for such an event. So we got to go back. Pardon me, Namalia. Who is this lady? The lady... Uh, is uh, a powerful old one, an elder uh, being of great power. And she kind of like gives Terry like a little bit of a side glance, not not really being it, not, not, she's trying to hide it, but she's not good at it. And uh, of great power and great evil. Okay. Um, she is responsible for uh, many deaths of of the mer- the merfolk, and uh, I've never told all of you this before, but she, uh, in a way, is also responsible for the destruction of my family many years ago. Uh, few know this. I'm, I'm trusting all of you with this information. My, my family, my parents in particularly, were members of her cult. And they uh, were ready and willing to give my life to the Lady of the Deep for greater power. Terry, make a charisma saving throw. Oh, goodness. Oh, my sincerest apologies, Namalia. I'm no stranger to tyrants. Well, if you need a dad... That's a 21. You've only had an experience like this happen to you before once, and last time you pretty much had a similar kind of resolve to it. You remember being given an order, but not being compelled to do it, but feeling that there was some kind of compulsionary magic behind it, but you decided to do it anyway. You have a sudden compulsion rise up inside of you and the compulsion that you hear the order that's given to you is come to me i am at sippard's pass (laughs) it's the same voice that told you to get the pearls Uh uh-oh mommy's on the phone Here's a fun here's a here's a fun bit of residual as we've just you at? Come on. Can you pick me up from the sleepover? <laughs> <laughs> as we've discussed before, Namalia, you are very cognizant of how this um specific cult and pact works. Um you can see a gleam in the eye of Terry and its silveriness like become mercury like, and you recognize that as being a direct contact from the patron. You see Terry seem to not change his continence, though. Like, you've seen the... I mean, your cult people change to kind of like a crazy, kind of like frantic, like, state. Whereas Terry just seems to be goofy-ass motherfucking Terry. <laughs> Plucky He's as just gonna, be. After, like, hearing uh, Namalia's story and his whole, like, uh, phone call happened, or more of a voicemail happened, he's like, oh, that's... Oh, it's really unfortunate. Uh, we're all glad that you, you got out of there. <laughs> Emily just kind of ha- just looks disgusted with him. Like, just like I thought you were already a shady dude, but like. <laughs> uh, um, Namalia takes a mental note, uh, but doesn't, you know, pop off right there and then. Um, <laughs> 
So, She's a classy lady. Yeah. Uh, for now, uh, th- thank you, everyone. It's it's uh, uh, as a druid. I I suppose I shouldn't say this. I should say that it's all for the balance, for the sake of of balance between life and death, destruction and creation. But for me, it is rather personal, this whole business with the Lady of the Deep. Um, And she is collaborating with uh, the Demon Prince of Lust. Uh, And uh, there there is involvement of other demonic forces as well. So... uh, I don't know that. I I think that that the people of Sifford's past, well, they're dead, right? Well, the people of Ta will likely need support and aid in this time, as uh, destruction and uh, endless hunger uh, threaten to. Uh, to destroy the order of, of balance. Well, maybe if uh, if the lady is such a threat to your the uh, just order of the world and all of that, then maybe it maybe we could try to use her own strength against her and try to, I don't know, like you know, me, uh, get up there before she does so we can maybe catch her, you know? Catch an old one? Don't sit on him, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Shira walks over to Nail and, and like just like mounts him. Like, I, I don't know. Not, you not always like, not like sexually, yeah. like like like, just like, like, a, like a horse. But... Yeah. I don't know. You always hear the stories of uh like ancient unfathomable beings being sealed away for eternity by just like three dudes waving their hands around in a cornfield. <laughs> What Who hears kind of this? books do you read? <laughs> when did you hear that and how drunk were you? Yeah, that's uh, what I want to know. If you my, have... my buddy Howard told me about it. If you have history And trained... how drunk was Howard? I have history, I think. <laughs> if you have history trained, you can make a history check. <laughs> What's jitsu? I, have a... I do not. <laughs> Terry. But, Namalia, if you do need a family... Evelyn, you don't know why, but that sounds <laughs> vaguely familiar. Like, everyone's making fun of it, but, like, yeah, you think you remember something about three catalysts actually doing something <laughs> in a cornfield <laughs> and causing a great being of ancient power to stop assailing a town. Harry, so I think... I'm not going to call you a liar crazy. But I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think there's just a... Uh, I think we all agree that she's evil, definitely. But maybe we could, uh, you know, use this as uh, use uh, me being here as an opportunity to maybe know her next move. How would you know her next move? Maybe yeah. She'll... What are you, what... Terry? Maybe she'll contact me in my sleep. Have, have, well, why, why would, would she contact she you? you in your sleep? <laughs> nobody you knows. Know. Nobody knows that you follow her, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> I thought they did. <laughs> no. You know, like I already so, told like some hold on, hold weird. On. Hold on. Let me let me let me let me give you a saving opportunity here. But let me make sure you understand the ground the ground here. Aveline Sen, Belroth Jai have no idea what your relationship to the lady is. Oh, shit. Namalia knows you are because there's aspects of you that you described as being uh, things that you have that I decided are aspects that the cultists of the Lady of the Deep would have, i.e. your eye and your powers. (laughs) Namalia has seen those, and she also has been hunting that cult. So it's out-of-character knowledge, 
But Terry, okay. Terry is the plucky kind of dork that I imagine would kind of fall into this trap. Now is your chance <laughs> to try and now is your time to try and work your way out of it. Well, you, you know, I, I've, act, I've been uh, offered power by multiple different beings in even the past. I don't know, three days. So maybe a powerful being by like the Lady of the Deep would be interested in me. You know, Are what? you I've saying had, that you can... want to follow her no, and pretend? No, 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 we could use me as like a little bit of bait. bait. <laughs> it seems like the... a the worst idea possible. Press X to sounds... doubt. <laughs> in my mind, it's just like Shinto really... is just like glancing over in the Malia and just like probably just seeing the most amount of doubt in her face and just like. I think like Balroth is literally just like sitting there like drinking, just watching. Like this is a good show. <laughs> like a in my soap mind... opera. In my mind, I feel like I this would just be super sus, and I would kind of just like notice like the chemistry between the two, um, or anti chemistry. Um, I feel like to some extent, I don't know. Belroth has probably noticed the animosity, but like now that Namalia has told us more, like he just thought that like. Yeah, he's kind of annoying. I can see why. I, I thought they were just like clashing personalities, but now like Sorry. she started to put two and two together. And he touches like... shit he shouldn't touch. <laughs> I get it. Terry is very independent. Namalia is very motherly. Like I think that's kind of the dynamic that we've got. But at this yeah. at this juncture, it does sound like Terry was just volunteering to become a servant of the Lady of the Deep. Um after Namalia just revealed that they tried to kill her. There's one yeah. pa- There's one part of that that I need um, uh, a role from, though, and it's not from Terry. Uh, Namalia, can you make an insight check? The 16? This plucky son of a bitch said that at least three entities have come to him seeking him out. And the more you think about that in your head, you realize that he would have no reason to lie about that or make that up. So that part of his fib there seems to be true. And so that's kind and of he like... he didn't choose another person. Well, no, 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 it's not that. It's like, the fuck is so special about this guy? Oh. <laughs> first, first, off, first off, you watched as the patron tried to control him and didn't succeed. And second... <laughs> are literally listening to him say he's important. And you know what? He he might be in ways that are un, unknowable to us, right? Yep. Um, it's always a halfling. <laughs> Halflings, they uh, always start shit. Fucking Hobbit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, of course it would be. <laughs> You know, I mean, Namalia isn't really interested in blowing his cover fully no. because she needs that connection. Okay. So she'll play along. Um, that, that actually is, now. Going, that is going to pose a, another role. Uh, Terry, go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Um, due to the nature of this insight check, I'm granting you advantage. So 21 yeah. is the result I'm taking. Um, you are pretty certain that there is now unspoken, but an un, uh, an unspoken, but a very well understood connection between you and Namalia that you were not aware of before. She explained in detail the cultists and the Lady of the Deep more than you know about her, and you know there's no way in fucking all of the 13 <laughs> hells that there, the Namalia as prescient and perceptive as she's been in your time with her, does not know that you currently serve the Lady of the Deep. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just thinking so like wacky, crazy, powerful dudes have been just like asking me to work for them. Maybe like we could get like, we could uh, somehow try to 
bait this lady of the deep into uh, employing me, and I can just be like a guy on the inside, you know? When he says that, it's kind of like he's looking over at Amalia like... <laughs> <laughs> How do you bait a old one? A, like... What does she like to eat? I don't fucking know. Does she like fish? I could like go to sleep with some fish or something. She likes to devour the innocent. Terry. Oh. Terry. People. Oh, which is not Terry, so... So I could go to sleep... <laughs> so what you're saying is I need to go to sleep with some innocent people. Terry. W- wait. <laughs> no. What? That's not what we're saying. <laughs> Wait, hold on. How did we you, get to are this? Are you trying to get the stink of innocent people on you so you smell like an innocent person? Is that what you're saying to me? No. So, uh, I thought he was saying he was going to steal people's innocence. Like, right. He's, right. No, no, he's going to steal some virgins and well, be like, we're going to have a sleepover. Well, well, now they're not innocent. That's just wrong. For let's, one. Let's focus on one thing. And I want I want, I want, want Chris to, to, to kind of come to this conclusion. Um, what does the Lady of the Deep want? What would serve as a thing to get her to come to you? We maybe have any, uh... Does anybody have any pearls? I mean, I'm sure I could get some from the guild, but... Or How much have you guild. had to drink? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why I do just... you need pearls, though? I <laughs> heard that, like, ancient beings like magic pearls. Well, I, I don't know if they're magic, magic pearls, but I guess we could find or... a wizard to make them magic. Yeah! Yeah, I mean, what? we'd have to go back to Nock for that, probably. Unless, Ooh. <laughs> unless I can talk well, to the guild here. Speaking of Nock, I would. I'm like assuming to that there. there's a jeweler's guild. Evelyn says she wants to go back. I mean, yeah, that's fine. I think maybe if we, uh, I've done some independent research on uh, Lady on. Like uh, ancient beings, like uh, this lady of the deep, you know. And I've always heard that uh, if you draw a salt circle and take uh, three perfect pearls and put it in the middle and put black candles around the pearls and light them as you go to sleep, they are often uh, tempted to contact you in your sleep. Terry's Uh, bullshitting all of this. Yeah, no, Barad is is just looking at Namalio like, is this a magic thing? Yeah. Um, Basically, uh, quick note, like, he is very deceptive. Like, I mean, the things he's saying do sound like there is, like, you know, an aspect of truth to them. Yeah. The only persons who are able to kind of like read through him, understand he's not telling the truth, would be Aveline, who's trained in Arcana, who would know that there's no artifact, uh, there's no actual spellcraft being described here. That's just like shenanigans. And Namalia, who <laughs> assumes he's lying always <laughs> and knows that. The author's right. just like, that's some, some magic shit right there. Yep. Yeah. Namalia <laughs> will. will... <laughs> Namalia will walk <laughs> eyes, just, yeah. uh, with Aveline and kind of look to the side and look to the side and shrug. <laughs> like, we know what's up. <laughs> She's just, just like, like, magic people are weird. Maybe I don't need that right? thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> just, the knife thing is cool, but my, man, magic. I don't know yeah. about that. Do you want another drink? Aveline in response? Yeah. <laughs> she just kind of nods and then just like looks down into her drink. Well... <laughs> 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 really this is the fact that she's an artifice herself it makes it impossible <laughs> for her to be drunk <laughs> but I can oh. pretend damn it <laughs> I mean fair <laughs> I may have done that oh, oh my gosh well 
<laughs> and, like, and looks at the the I'm guessing it's a hookah and like do they have anything stronger than this like <laughs> this is a lot do they have these in knock I'm <laughs> just probably. I'm just saying it's worth a shot speaking of Noxon, um I don't I, you you remember Safira right yeah I remember her um the doll maker told me that she was staying there I don't know if you would want to reconnect yeah, we catch up with her. What do we, what do we, wait, he knows her? Uh, yeah. Um, and then kind of like, I, I want to explain like what happened, like, mm. um. Oh, are you explaining it to the whole table? Um, not like out loud. I'm kind of like, like, if me and Sin are kind of having a one-on-one, like that's fine. But if other people hear, like, that's kind of, that's okay too. Yeah. But, like she's not like. Everyone's going to basically pick up on what's being put down. And, um, yeah, from the sounds of it, um, the angel man, um, is connected to, according to what they say, a druid, um, that they, uh, associated with, um, Sephira, uh, according to descriptions that are being given, um, is angel blooded. Um, she is what is known as an awesome or awesome -er. Um, so, um, of what circle, uh, you're not really able to glean um, that information unless either Stephanie or um, Elizabeth remember what circle she happened to be part of. I don't. I do not at yeah. all. You do not know. <laughs> and that's fine. It oh. might be in my notes, but probably not. Oh, but I basically want to make my objective clear that they're are some memories that I'd like to recollect, but I'm also interested in what the other people who are interested in the Eveline, like I kind of want to glean like what everyone's objective is um, as well, because I'm curious. So wait, so you need it, Eveline too? Apparently, yes. <laughs> there's three of them? Oh God. I think there's just well, the I trust one. you the most, so. Okay, well, that's fine. Fair is fair. I mean, you are technically her, but not her. But yeah, yeah, you get it. It's okay. Don't think too hard about it, son. I need another How drink. confused <laughs> are you guys going to make Bell Roth? <laughs> so confused. My <laughs> <A> poor boy! <laughs> 100% confused. <laughs> Belrock yeah. just feels drunk just from all the inform the weird information. <laughs> yeah. So he drinks more. Yeah. <laughs> See if it'll make sense. Just use food and drink to cope, Belrock. Yep. Just like some of us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag COVID life. Um, yeah, um, as you're kind of, you know, um, finishing some stories there, kind of communicating some thoughts and passing, you know, meats, um, uh, hoses, and um, beverages about, um, you do notice that uh, there are, um, you know, plenty of people present here in the many mouths. Um, and uh, you also notice that the, uh, the, the waters bar is completely packed, um, absolutely full up of people. Um, a number of them look to be kind of like hardworking types. Um, and uh, despite kind of being like end of the day drinking, it doesn't look like they're very jovial, uh, like normal working folk would be. It looks like they're a bit more troubled and they're just kind of in their cups, but they're just kind of sad looking. I guess the best way to kind of describe it. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, same. Yeah, <laughs> mood. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> they obviously didn't have the same um, afternoon as some of you. Um, but uh, yeah, they do look like they are not in the best space. Um, the other thing of note, um, which is only uh, kind of slightly important, is it does look like at the bar there does appear to be a... Um, kind of a 
burly individual who is kitted out like he's some sort of cell sword or adventure excuse me adventurer type um and um he is very confused looking like he's not understanding the environment Um, Namalia would like to just, you know, as this chaos with, uh, Terry and Sen and, uh, Aveline, Aveline or Aveline? Aveline. Aveline. Uh, as they're, you know, th there's this chaos happening, Belroth is, like, stuffing his face and chasing it with ale or whatever, um, Namali would like to kind of eavesdrop on the crowd that's or on that group of workers that's looking kind of morose to see if she can pick up any you overhear that a lot of them like when they do have conversations they're very um uh serious conversations a lot of gravity to it and what your understanding is is it seems like everyone present um appears to have been um disposed of their houses in one way or another. A uh, decent-sized group of them um, seem to state that they used to live in a town called Hallerton up north of here until a bunch of undead sacked their entire village, destroyed everything to the man. Um, they explain that they're very hopeful um, that the um, town elder, Thomas Vess, will be able to help them uh, reclaim their uh, town uh, but so far, nothing, and it's been it's been days, uh, almost two six day now. Um, you hear that other people uh, have kind of moved up from Nock. Um, they state that they were uh, uh, denizens of a small uh, encampment on the other side of um, the uh, Dunwater Mountains, and. Uh, their settlement was attacked by a creature um, with 100 hands and heads, um, and it obliterated them. And uh, several of them say that they remember seeing a streaking red comet flying from the heavens down at it. Um, the um, other people say that they came from the south side of Nock. Um, some of them claim to be refugees from Sifford's Pass. Looks like a lot of people who have been displaced have ended up in the Many Mounts. The uh, alternate title for this episode, Connecting Trains is what we went with, but the alternate title was going to be Many Mounts Defeat. I just didn't know which one was cooler. That's a good one, too. They're both, they're both good. The next one, the next one. <laughs> the uh, Soldier Fellow, or the uh, Sellsword type, um, doesn't appear to be talking too much to them, just mostly kind of asking and then listening, from what you can tell. Um, and uh, yeah, from what you can gather, um, he uh, seems to be very interested in what's going on here. Um, you can tell he is actively trying to kind of take mental notes uh, regarding what they're saying, almost as if he's forming a quest log. It's a big-ass quest log. For sure. <laughs> Do you want to interact with any of the uh, refugees here, or Selsworth? Um, <clears throat> Amalia will share what she's kind of eavesdropped, you know, what she's hearing. Okay. She'll share it with the group in case anyone wants a piece of that. <laughs> Aveline is sympathetic, but it has nothing to do with her. <laughs> We got our own issues to deal with. Apparently, we're chumming the water for the, the lady of the deep. Sounds of magic come from the doors. You see two more individuals enter, or sorry, three more individuals enter in. Um, one of them uh, appears to be a very massive green dragonborn with a really awesome great axe, um, kind of just connected over his shoulder. Um, another of the individuals appears to be an alabaster kind of skinned human uh, with kind of white hair, leather armor. At his belt, he has a very strange firearm, uh, very different than the ones you've seen in Nock, um, and kind of adventurer's gear on him as well. Um, and the uh, third individual, uh, you can't really tell, um, probably about four foot 
maybe five foot tall, um, wrapped in a bundle of clothing and attire, very roguish looking from just like an external, but you cannot tell what species this individual is um, until you look down. You can see that uh, the individual has clawed feet, uh, like that of the Kenku. And the three walk over to this uh, soldier type um, at the bar, almost directly, um, kind of slap him on the shoulder and um, say, well, did you get anything? Uh, this is the um, uh, white-haired uh, gentleman speaking. Um, the uh, soldier fellow at the uh, bar says, yeah, um, I, I think what we're looking for is in Hallerton. We should probably make our way there at first light. Nods his head. Well, yeah. Okay. That that sounds great. Are there rooms here? Um, the uh, individual with the clawed feet is gone from sight for every single one of you. Um, but I would like for Sen and only Sen to make a perception check. Okie dokie. 19. It's good enough. You see the uh, cloaked individual kind of moving towards um, the person who is furthest away from the rest of the party at the table seating. Looks like they are about to just pilfer whatever they have in their bag. Um, but you can see that it's a feeler, which is a technique used by a gutter snipe or a cut burst to try mm. and kind of gauge, not actually act. And when mm. this individual sees that you see them, kind of and backs away. <laughs> Just kind of nods an acknowledgement. Wasn't going to tell on him anyway, but fair game. Uh, and that was the fully, that was the Kanku, yeah. Kanku, okay. Um, and they're over by the bar, right? Yeah, most of them. Um, mm. sh uh, she will return to them, yeah. Mm. But if you don't interact with them, that's perfectly fine. Uh, they do eventually. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say, I think Sin would actually get up and uh, uh, go over there. Okay. And uh, just say, uh, kind of like saddle up next to them, and yeah, it looks say like slick one. The only one sitting is the uh, the warrior type. Uh, when you yeah. kind of like move over to him, um, well, specifically to the kenku. Oh, the kenku is not sitting. The kenku is kind of standing with um, the really white guy and um, the green dragonborn. It looks like those three. But are they standing at the bar? Yeah, they're standing near their friend, the warrior type. Mm. We'll just slide in next, like standing next to them, okay. and just say "slick one." Uh, she kind of looks up at you and says, "We could catch on your part. Lucky you. Your friend would have lost a uh, quite a bit of coin. Make sure that they uh, don't keep it hanging out like that. So um, obviously, from what I understand, there's lots of knives about. <laughs> <laughs> a bit." Uh probably wouldn't be going around doing that anyways. There's uh, plenty of others. So, um, yeah, fine. Um, and uh, she kind of like <laughs> seems confused, but you can see that the uh, white uh, uh, individual kind of turns to look to you and says, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you were talking about, but I, I have more pressing matters. Do, can I ask you a question, though? Are you from around here? Not here, but... We're looking for an elf. Maybe an elf who's elf. lost his mind. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. It it, it sounds like... Very vague description. Might be up near Howlerton. Um, he's a... Um, elf. Uh, blonde hair. Um... Probably about a hundred or so years old. Um, no, older than that. Uh, says um, <laughs> the Kenku, and then uh, the Dragon One kind of turns and says, "Yeah, he's probably like four hundred now." Whoa! <laughs> and then kind of turns and looks back at the warrior type. Um, the white gentleman looks at you and says, 
four hundred years old. Blonde hair, um, handsome. Looks down at the Kanku. The Kanku says, <laughs> <laughs> "Depends on your type, I suppose." Um, handsome-ish. Uh, carries a sword. Conglomerate attire. Have you seen him? Mm, can't say I have. Mm. Hallerton, though? And we think he might be there. Um, from the sounds of it, some bad magic's been happening everywhere we've heard about. We're very interested in finding this individual. They're witchers. Fair enough. <laughs> well, um... There is quite a bit that uh, has been going on. I mean, been running into a lot of uh, death cults and things. Death here. cults, uh, you say? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what they were saying might be up in Howlerton. But it seems like no one's really certain as to what the nature of that is. But he shakes his head, kind of looking at you, and... Um, Says, sorry, rude of me. Um, I I do apologize. Um, looks down to the Kenku who's, who's like shaking her head, and then he shakes his head and says, "I'm Dengu," and he kind of offers his hand out to you. Takes it and shakes it. If you do come to any information regarding this um, individual, his name's Kelder. If you find him. We're definitely in need of finding him. It's very important. Okay. How can I uh, contact you if I find him? Um, the uh, Kanku looks up at you, makes a gesture, which is kind of like an indicator of, do you know Kant? Yes. Nods. And then in Kant, and also in talking, basically telling a small little allegorical story, uh, basically explains to you to dead drop it with the Mardigans. Mm. And then you realize, oh, she's doing perfect Mardigan can't right now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe I can help you out then. Uh, and easy enough to contact you then. Yeah, and uh, he kind of nods. Um, and... Uh, you see him like kind of like look down at uh, the Kenku again. Um, the Kenku shakes her head again. He nods. Um, and uh, yeah, Dengu, um, who you may recognize as a human, but he's a different type of human, known as a Cardith, um, a Cardithian. Um, Cardithians come from the land of Cardith, not Cardiff, not to be mistaken with mm -hmm. um, immortal, um, omnipresent, omnipotent uh, coronavancers. Uh, it's a province to the west of the center province of Vitali. Cardiff mm -hmm. is a hellscape land. Uh, it's basically filled with uh, elemental abominations, and the Cardithians have basically survived. Uh, due to their very, very fortunate nature, and also their just rugged kind of mountaineering kind of uh, abilities. Uh, Dengu, Sounds exciting. Dengu doesn't look like much, but you can kind of get an idea of how like corded he is based on like the small amount of like skin and muscle that's kind of showing. Hmm. Um, and I mean, it looks like he could probably just climb like a sheer surface, no problem. Like he's that kind of muscly. <laughs> My friend Liz is like that. If you're a Magic the Gathering fan and are familiar with what a core is, uh, Cardithians are basically very similar to core. Not a clue. Sorry. It's fair. It's more <laughs> for the non-existent audience. <laughs> one day we'll be famous, Scott. No, I'm gonna give a shit. <laughs> I'm the only one watching this. I'm gonna cringe when I have to listen back to that. Um, but yeah, the... Um, Warrior type appears to be wearing kind of green garb. Um, he uh, has a very big hammer kind of on his belt, uh, war hammer, not a maul, um, and a shield on his back. Um, so the adventuring party that you're seeing kind of leaving you is a big green dragon born with great axe, a uh, human fighter with a bunch of tattoos and a hammer and a shield, a uh, Cardithian human fighter, or 
some sort of fighter type with a gun. Um, and uh, last but not least, the uh, Kenku. Cool. And they will lead. Okay. Returns. <laughs> Anything else that you want to do in the bar? Um, I'm just kind of curious. I, w was it like obvious that Sen left and went over to people or? Yeah, Sen would have gotten up, walked over, started talking to those people. And then that conversation would have lasted a couple minutes or a minute or two, more like. Um, and then the party would have left. They would have left the, in actuality, three of them would have left the uh, human fighter with the tattoos that I mentioned. He would have remained. And uh, mm. just so you know what he looks like, uh, that's what he looks like. Um, but she's just kind of curious, like, um, <clears throat> what Sun was talking about okay. for a little bit. Yeah, tell him. About uh, what we talked about and about the uh, blonde elf that they called Kelder up in Hallerton, which what Namalia had gleaned was where a lot of these people are from. Um, would Aveline, like, make the connection between the play and the elf that they were describing? Well done. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. She's, she's just kind of, like, got her hand on her chin a little bit. She's just like, that sounds really... Actually, it's the exact same name as the the character from the opera we were watching. Um, if you remember that, you were watching the opera. <laughs> <laughs> Belrod really was wanted... watching the opera <laughs> until there was, I was a fight watching on the opera. stage. Then could not pay attention, <laughs> especially during second act. I mean. <laughs> Uh, well, I wonder if they know about that, because it might be good information for them if they're looking for that individual. Well, I mean, was he the one in the play, or was he a character in the play? Mm. No, I, it was the character, um, oh. which is, I'm not well, sure if they would actually crazy. want the actor, but... Um, I think they're looking for the person. All right, maybe they only know his character name then, but that seems to fit the description. Hmm. Even, I'm not leaving anything out. There's nothing I'm going to add. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the human fighter still remains at the bar. He's the only rem uh, remnant of that party. Yeah. Uh, that's I still guess present. we could go ask him. He's an option. Okay. Well, you I'll just get up talk. and go then. Okay. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Nothing better to Then I'll join you. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Moral support. Okay. So, um, Abilene and Sen head over that way. Terry, you're kind of uh, sitting there just drinking quiet, probably counting uh, your 700. Um, do you want to engage with them at all or just let them kind of slip aside, continue drinking and counting? Uh, Yeah, at that point, Terry would be trying to seem not too suspicious, and he thinks the best way to do so is just uh, keep counting his money and drinking. But trying to pay attention to what's going on over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's listening. Okay. And um, Namalia, um, similar question. Less money to count, but yeah, same question. Uh, yeah, Namalia is doing her best to keep all of her ears open. Okay. And Balroth, um, eating meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry all this nuanced nonsense keeps happening. <laughs> the best decision. Yeah, he's just like, eh, if it's important, someone will tell me. Am, nom, nom. <laughs> um, Fair enough. You approach. And, uh, oh, oh, he's still kind of somber. Um, you know, with the situation as it stands. Um, kind of turns and looks at you. I, um... Uh, I'm sorry. Um, can I help you with something? Um, 
she very just like kind of formally introduces herself, like overly formally introduces herself. Um, and then just kind of explains what Sin had told her. Once and you, once you finish, you know, introducing yourself <laughs> formally, he goes, fuck, that was a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Oris, um, from Parnak. Uh, uh, I don't have much. Else. I died one time. Um, died? What was that like? I don't know. I was trying to make up cool sounding things like she was doing there with the oh. titles and full name and whatnot. Because if I remember correctly, Abilene does have kind of a mouthful of a name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he kind of goes off. Um, uh, it, it sucked. Um, from what I recall, I, I mean, I didn't don't remember much about it other than Dengu helped me out saved my life. Um, these folks are saying that there's lots of bad shit happening around here. Um, and, uh, yeah, what do you know? I'm sure you got another problem that you're probably dealing with some horrible fucking shite that you're talking about. Most certainly. Um, but the matter at hand for us, oh. uh, my, <laughs> my friend here was explaining um, what your colleagues were uh, telling them. And I couldn't help but stick my nose in it. It sounds very familiar to a character from an opera that we had just viewed. Um, actually, the same name. Uh, and I didn't know if that would be valuable information to them. A play? What? Yes, <laughs> a knock. A knock. It, it, it was a performance. Uh, and the story had a character that was very similar to the person your friends are looking for. Okay. Do you want me to um, take you to our room and you can talk to them or? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you, the way you're coming about it, I'm not really understanding what you're saying. I'm just trying to be helpful. That's okay. Just be a bit more frank then, because you're not being helpful with your vagaries. You're just saying, also an opera, <laughs> and it's about the thing that they were talking about. They were talking about a bunch of things to different people. So I don't know exactly what you're saying, lady. Um, she, and just, then, she just looks, like, pissed off at this point, and she's just like, Sen, you deal with this person, and he walks then, away. <laughs> as you're leaving, you see, you can hear him rambling your name back to you, but he's butchering <laughs> it. <laughs> so, she just, like, very... Uh, poutily sits down back at the table. <laughs> hey, you. Suck. <laughs> it's like, I hate it here. Aline cam camcorder. <laughs> the, all the ice. <laughs> it's all the ice. <laughs> um, looks to you. Okay, well. Do you want me to take you over to him to say what you're saying or do what you're doing? I'm not the thoughtful one here. I I can mostly take when somebody says something to me and recite it back to someone, but that's about it. Other than that, I'm not very good at, like, you know, really names. <laughs> you're muted. Elizabeth, you're muted. You're the one that's muted. Oh, damn it. Sure, it was great. <laughs> Whatever it was. It was, it was perfect. Lost in the chance. Um... Uh, fuck, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, you can take me to him. I apparently wasn't paying attention to the opera well enough to uh, make that connection. Uh, but I, yeah. Okay. Um, as you kind of, um, you know, follow Boris, um, he kind of stops and he says, I mean, if you want to bring her with you, that's fine. I mean, she does look a little bit mopey, but... Um... If and she wants to come, then whatever. Kind of does like a little like to Aveline. She just kind of like and... gets up and very like <laughs> uh, dog with tail between legs, like walking over there. He kind of stops for a second, looks at your table, and says, "Um, actually, fuck it. If you got friends, we can just come drink with you." Hold on a second. You wait here. Go back to your table. I'll be back you know in a what? Bit. We'll buy you around too. You know. Sure. Fucking. I was gonna say buy you one, but what? All right. You're helping we us. We can each buy each other you're one. You're helping us, and you're giving us alcohol. All right. 
Um, I'm sorry, Dengu's not going to be able to get to sleep. Get his beauty wigs. Uh, heads on back into the He'll back. Be fine. About five minutes later, um, Oris um, and Dengu and um, the Dragonborn come out. The uh, uh, Kenku does not come out. Um, and uh, they come to see Theo. Um, Dengu says, okay, well, if we're making this a bit more formal, gestures, you've met Oris, and this is my friend Borkuk. He sits, looks across the table. Um, I'm assuming you all do your pleasantries. Yeah. Okay. And um, what information do you have regarding our friend Keld? Opera points to uh, Adeline. Did you relay the information? Uh, yeah, and I kind of want to, because she, I think you had her do like a history check for the opera, right? So mm -hmm. she was a little bit more familiar with the story. Um, yep. And as we discussed then, if you didn't take the notes, um, I'll go ahead and relay it. Um, Kelder um, was drawn and made mad, um, and Phi was unable to help him. And despite his um, attempts to get her to help him, um, was unable to help. And so instead of succumbing to her own madness, she left the world with uh, Alicia. Um, was the last time she was kind of seen in her fi like state and not her demon lieutenant's state. And that would have happened like 60 years ago. So these people are either using really good makeup or they're insanely old. Not terrible. Uh. So you would know that Cardithians live longer than normal humans by like the same fold as a dwarf. So we, Dengu doesn't look like he's outside of he's not uh, you know um, anachronistic. Uh, Oris is because he's just a human. There's no reason he should look like he's in his thirties or forties. Mm -hmm. um, Dragonborn are also pretty well uh, are long lived, and you have no idea what the pleasant looks like underneath. So, or or um, that they're so nice pleasant. Yeah, and they're not here. <laughs> um, I don't know. She's just gonna be like, uh, as I was, well, as I was explaining to the simpler of you, um, and oh. just kind of like, <laughs> like just basically tell them about the opera that we went to. Um, and not sure if they know the story about the opera. Kind of say what you were telling them. Um, and just say your friend sounds basically exactly like this character. Uh, from this opera. They wrote, um, they wrote an opera about her. That's interesting. He kind of shakes his head, looks down at the table. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that, that would be the same person. I don't really want to get too involved in the uh, discussion beyond that, but uh, yeah, that would be the person really the elder of that story. Have Understandable. Seen, have you seen him? Um, other than during the play, no. It would have been an actor, I presume. He wasn't um, uh, surrounded by the voices of um, thousands of dead, wailing people, and he wasn't um, butchering innocence, was he? On stage. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah, not that we saw. Then he's not the person with it. If you do... So we need to help you, or you would like to find the real person, not the actor. Oh, and real quick note for uh, Zizo, uh, Chris, and Magpie. This is happening at your table, by the way. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so feel free to interject if you want to. Um, but yeah, this person did just mention um, someone who walks around with the screams of a thousand people. And anyway, um, <laughs> he uh, kind of says, we need to find him. He, um, something very, very bad happened to him a long time ago, and we're trying to fix it. Borga smiles very teethily, and uh, at this moment, uh, Oris kind of slides a drink in front of Aveline. The simpler of us, nods his head. <laughs> <laughs> and you see him smiling like crazy about it, like he's been thinking about it the whole time since you said it. <laughs> um, just like nods <laughs> Dengu kind of crosses his arms <sighs> none of our means 
of trying to detect where he is have worked. And um, yeah, we're just trying to get as much information about the areas. But we do know he is somewhere in Osiria. Because that's where we left him. Well, you might want to try knock. Uh, see if you can get any leads from there. Um, we, um, and... came, we came from there, actually. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. There was. You said um, something about Hallerton, too, though? Yeah, that's what we were hearing. A um, bunch of undead. Did you those crazy ladies? Crazy ladies. Oh, I heard about something. Great. Wait, crazy ladies. <laughs> you see him kind of like <laughs> take a second. Well, if he was in the opera with the crazy ladies, oh, would he the be with the crazy ladies, the demon ladies. Yeah. Mm. He kind of like puzzled, looks at you, and Orga kind of like looks at Dengu, and Dengu kind of looks up at the dragonborn. Wait, what? And then he kind of <laughs> looks over at Belroth to find the crazy ladies. Um, them three sisters from the opera. You mean to say... The ones that went crazy and killed people, or them... You, you, the mean, lady... you mean to say five, he says as he turns and looks mm. at Aveline. I believe that's what um, he's referring to, yes. Looks back at Barra. crazy lady. You've seen her? Yes. Where? At the past. <laughs> Severance Pass. Yeah, that's the one. It was a pleasure. He stands up. Uh, Borga goes, What's wrong, boss? Dengu says, We gotta move. And he starts walking with determination. And you can also see that, like, from the look in his eye, there's like a absolute murderous, like, intent in his eye as he stands and walks away. You good? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you good, bro? Or no, he ain't good. <laughs> he not good. Or is still sitting there smiling, looking at you. Uh, you lot kind of like uh, goes, well, it, it, it was a pleasure. Um, and um, thank thank you for the information. Um, and um, I, you, you, he looks over to Belroth. You won't need to be worrying about no crazy ladies anymore. We're going to go and deal with that. By yourselves? Oh, yeah. seems a little ambitious. Oh, uh, one got a little too friendly. Well, you've never met Oris, champion of the A10 might. Why did I switch into a hick accent? I don't know. <laughs> Beats me. <laughs> you've, He's never, been you've never met Oris, champion of the A10 might, uh, the reborn uh, master of his own fate before. And you see him. That's fair. You see him kind of like as he's like saying it, and like kind of flexing. He kind of looks over, like at Aveline, kind of like. <laughs> see how fancy I am, yeah. He's like, yeah. and then as he kind of gets up, he kind of whispers, "I'm like, I was thinking about it." And he like, walks away. Aveline just looks completely unimpressed. <laughs> Deadpan. <laughs> Looks down into her drink. He tried so hard. You can, you can see, you can see him like saddened by this kind of like, definitely sweat drop walking away, kind of like <laughs> the 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 shadow crestfallen kind of like you know stance as he makes his way to the back. <laughs> he deflated like a balloon. <laughs> Poor yeah. guy. I know it doesn't mean much, but Sin's impressed. There, it did sound doesn't... pretty pretty cool. But just... Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, that would be um, that strange adventuring group. Um, Why do I feel like we're going to find them dead later? You snatched the words out of my <laughs> mouth. Yeah. As you, I was like, oh, they fun to die. That's why Sin is like, by yourself? It's, it wouldn't yeah. be the first time they ran into a very horrible situation where they should have died. Should have. <laughs> oh, bye. That's hopeful. <laughs> Aveline just kind of looks kind of guilty, like she just sent men to their death. Like, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, any questions or anything else that you want to engage in for the remainder of the night? 
Hmm. I'm just like super amused that everyone is explaining everything and he's all like, hey, was it them crazy ladies? <laughs> Bell Rock move, though. We appreciate it. He helps in his own way. He do. He tries so hard. You know, he, he I was good. like, he does good. Does Namalia need to step in and like translate? And I was like, <laughs> nah. the simpler of us. Like, they'll understand. Nah. Let him Panama him until they get it. <laughs> you know, the ones that they put they put the hand on their head and the arm. <laughs> If, if nothing else, you, <laughs> you all go to sleep and awake the next morning. And I believe the goal was to return to knock, right? Yeah. Okay. For sanity's sake, I will say Jai is capable of coordinating with you and uh, he will drive. Um, there's a small little uh, hop and a skip to knock. So someone roll a d20 to see if there's a random encounter. We would uh, have had a full rest though. Yeah, long rest. Oh, cool. Yeah, long rest. And you would be, someone would be out, um, well, one of you is out 25 gold for the meal and the drinks, but then another one of Man. you, oh, sorry, Terry, you already afforded uh, a room for um, the party to reside in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the room you would note is actually um, a common room that you paid for, because there are no, like, suites or anything here in the many mouths. So you basically have eight beds, uh, bunk style, inside of a room. Oh, uh, yeah, that's some. Yeah. Fair enough. Your down payment will go to waste since you are leaving on a mouth, but uh eh, what doesn't six, mean we won't come back. What's six gold to me? You know, we're probably gonna have to fucking run right out of knock. We'll see how it goes. As uh, we're getting chased by the police or something. Sorry. <laughs> you trap <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I mean that might happen. We'll see. Uh you return to the city and knock, you enter through the north gate. Um you are not um you know uh dealt with very harshly at the gates um you do note that um you know uh jai is very uh capable in sweet talking the uh main guard and explaining that uh, they just purchased the bike in question out in Onamout. Uh, they have the papers um which he displays and um you're allowed in um to the city of knock doesn't appear that there's anything untowards um, regarding uh, entry. Um, and you are basically arriving relatively early in the morning, like 9-ish, 10-ish. Great. So the city is yours. If you wish to pass by it and just continue on to the uh, Erlatz Ranch, you can. Or you can do something in the city if you'd like. Sun's got to stop at home first. For sure. Just check in. It's early enough that if you want to spend the day in the city, you could get a downtime activity out of the way. I check in with the uh, my guild. Okay. See if they need anything. Okay, so we've got um, Belroth checking in with the Grey Order. Um, G R A Y order, by the way. Um, not G-R-E-Y. The spelling is important. <laughs> the more British the spelling, the more official. Um, Terry, are you doing anything in particular? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's, uh, after hearing about what's going on in Knock and stuff, Terry's going to try to lay low here. Okay. Jai says he's got some pawns that you can uh, stick with him on, and uh, he'll kind of keep you um, out of the limelight. Um, Namalai? Uh, definitely going to Gravesend to just do like a lore dump for the the I don't know the druidic powers that be um, in Nock. Okay, Gravesend. Um, and uh, Aveline, are you wanting to just move through the city, or is there anything that you want to do when you get here, like recover certain individuals? Um. Where has Copper been this whole time? Yeah, he's been at House Calibor. Okay, okay. Um, I will stop by to check on him and kind of also do a lore dump, but I want to leave out the fact that there's another uh, automaton walking around because I 
don't want a fourth party trying to basically, you know what I mean? Yeah, they actually divulge that they are aware of a second one mm, uh, oh, okay. to you, so you don't actually have to tell them, but you immediately realize that it's already too late. Um, <laughs> they are very interested in meeting with her, and they ask you if you know her. That's the part where you kind of probably like, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Like trying She's just to... the same model or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, wow, there's multiples. This will be great. So we may not have to destroy you to um, get all the information <laughs> we want. Um, and so <laughs> you're kind of like, Thanks. And then th they will perform, <laughs> perform some kind of tests um, for a very short uh, duration, just kind of, um, you know, making sure everything is up to par in the um, your chassis uh, department. Um, OK, um, yeah. And copper is um, shiny, polished and new. Um, and you'll also note that um, the uh, the child um, has been repaired from the neck up. The body oh is com the body is completely immobile, but the head is completely active. And they say heart. <laughs> we can continue to work on him if you'd like, um, but if you'd like to take him, we understand. Hmm. No, I think that would be cruel. I think he probably should have the rest of his body. <laughs> Okay. As you uh, see, like that question postulated to you, um, there's kind of like a look of hope in his eyes. And as you kind of say he needs to get better, you can kind of see like a sadness in his face. Um, oh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, My son misses me. <laughs> Namali, Nam oh, uh. you make it to House Gravesend. Um, when you enter in, um, all your inquiries to speak to specific individuals are rebuffed, and they explain that. Um, House Graves and is currently in Congress with uh, House Calix um, as preparations are being made for what appears to be a dire circumstance that has arisen to the south. Wait. To the south. Your immediate thought would be the Sifford's Pass uh, okay. situation. But if you inquire about that specifically, you might learn something different. Do you want to inquire? Yeah. Yes. Okay. They explain that um, in the Southlands, um, due south of here, uh, House Sereda is currently <laughs> having issues at Fort Trine. Apparently, um, a very strange grouping of entities known to the members of House Gravesend as ancients have started attacking Fort Trine. You can make a history, nature, or religion check your choice. Or Arcana. Any one of the intelligence nature checks. Or intelligence checks. And whatever one you choose determines what you'll kind of glean about ancients. Yep. 23 is really high. Um, ancients are beings that were schismed from the original Fey during the time of the One Wood. Uh, they are sometimes derogatorily referred to as the schism. They are entities that are blights on any place or presence that they come to. You overcall hearing that um, in the conversations uh, amongst people that the uh, delegation from the Dragon Isles, uh, namely the Tiefling with Wings um, and the uh, Elf Entourage, um, at the Opera, they were displaced from the Dragon Isles by a massive scourge of schism. Schism, from all that you know, are a multivariant kind of aberrational being or a species uh, that seem to empower one another based on the presence of one another to the other. So how familiar are you with Magic the Gathering? I know a little bit. <laughs> then don't worry about it. You don't know much beyond that. If you know what a sliver is, then you know what a schism is. If one has an ability, it grants all schism that same ability, even if they didn't have it. No. So no, each, no. each one grants the powers of itself to all the other ones, and they get stronger. I, I don't like that. Love a good hive mind concept. Yeah, schism is great. Also, how many fucking crises can one region possibly withstand? 
Better question. How many of them are connected? And how many of them are not? But yeah, Great apparently question. House Gravesend is in Congress with House Calix. Um, and uh, yeah, they explained that they are preparing to engage uh, at Fort Trion. At the assistance, uh, to assist House Raven. Uh, Malika doesn't really like read or write, so not Malika, Namalia. So she will ask, <laughs> um, she will ask someone to scribe okay. all of this information. Okay. And then they'll, you want it penned out, you mean? Yeah, and yeah. delivered to import whoever's important decision makers. I don't know, whatever. In the party, you mean? Or you're, um, oh, you're transcribing your information to be passed yes, off to them. Got it. For Gravesend. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. You spent some time with a scribe, and uh, that is done. Um, let's see. Uh, done with Stephanie. Done with uh, Tejo. Um, Belroth. You enter into the uh, Grey Order um, uh, Guild Hall. Um, it does look like it's scarce. There's not a lot of people present. Um, not a lot of combatants. Um, you do see a uh, younger individual uh, who, you know, you sparred with before, uh, but nobody, like, notable. Um, you remember this guy's name is Noldos. And uh, he sees you and he says, Oh, Belroth. Thought hey. You, thought you'd be in Sifford's Pass or trying to retake Fort Carpenter. Did you um, not get the memo? Wait, the orders in Sifford's Pass? Yeah. Grey Order was hired up by House Serena, as were many mercenary companies um, in the city. Um, they, yeah. I believe the Honor Bound. Um, there was also um, uh, Stormsmiths. Uh, plenty of groups were taken up by House Serena in an in, insane amount of wealth being posited to each of the guilds. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much every mercenary in the city um, has been hired individually if they're not a part of a guild. They all have been moved towards Sifford's Baths. Uh, yeah, I've been, been a bit busy here and there. Didn't get the memo. Hmm. Uh, Malcolm, you're not up there. Oh, I'm... Um, you get the ship shit stick? You, um, you're stuck here? I'm holding down the fort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He smiles, but he you can tell like he hasn't really been blooded in a fight. Like he's got all his teeth, you know, right. there's there's no scars or cuts or anything. Like uh I, I think the worst that he's got is like there's like a, a bit of a, a, a you know, kind of like a dimple here from when someone smashed him in the face with a war hammer. But like there's not a lot to him. Like he hasn't at least that and that's what he tells people really he got drunk and tripped over his own feet. <laughs> or ran sh like head first into a door <laughs> as he was trying to leave drunkenly. Um not that's ever happened to any of my friends. No, um, Warhammer! Warhammer! <laughs> <laughs> it was sick, man! <laughs> Radical. <laughs> um, but yeah, he seems to be taking up shit duty. If you ask him to kind of like see the ledgers and understand a bit about it, it seems yeah. that the movement for the Great Order is not direct into Sippert's Pass, according to uh, the Guildmaster's notes. It seems that they're... A uh, intent is to circle around the um, divide, which is the mountains and waterway that kind of break, um, that create Sifford's Pass. Um, here, I'll move you to a big map so you can understand. So as you can see, this kind of like mountainous slash waterway region that kind of goes up all the way through to uh, Nightfang Pass. Uh, basically, from Night Thing passed down to Fort Carpenter. That's known as the Divide. Okay. No. And uh, they are going to be moving south uh, through um, the uh, the plains. Um, like, they're heading towards Woodton, and then they're going to arc up into uh, Fort Carpenter, which, according to the reports that you're seeing here, was taken by the enemy force, and that's all it's listed as. There's no information or intel regarding what the enemy force is. Shit. Do they have any sort of, like, communication methods? Like, 
pigeons or some shit? Um, he would state that um, the only information that he has regarding a direct connect would be through House Serena. But the Grey Order, since they mustered pretty much everyone that was available, um, they didn't see any reason for leaving communications behind. Okay. Um... And you would know that you're probably one of the better like representatives of the mercenary company, but you would also know you're one of the most independent. So like this kind of thing isn't if it were just normal time and you weren't kind of affiliated with an adventuring group and you know you were just doing your own thing, this is not kind of the kind of job you'd be interested in. And it's one of the kind of jobs you'd be kind of the most annoyed about. Because again, you've yeah. <laughs> you've lost a lot of friends in like group fights. You're the the yeah. you're the Mel Gibson of the well, <laughs> let's not say Mel Gibson, but like <laughs> you're that you're that stereotypical like uh, hardened veteran, you know, yeah. mercenary. What a dummy, Liam Neeson. You're Liam Neeson. Well, it's also yes, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. He's also kind of the worst. What is it with oh, all these? Shit. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm just old. Oh my goodness, yeah. he's so cute. Um. All right. A bubble cat. He's just. He's so pretty. <laughs> what a good. Um, what a good man. <laughs> I love his little smushy face. <laughs> hey yo, I'm. <laughs> I'm Mister. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, oh, okay. No. He's I trying to give us a butt. A <laughs> that, is, that is a He's cat giving butt. us butt. That is a whole uh, cat butt. Oh my god. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um. So yeah, if um, okay. you can take notes, you can take the or you can take the <laughs> notes that are present and kind of see the um uh, movements for the gray order, which might assist. And also, there's notations as to how Serena's action is moving. They're heading towards Sippers Pass Direct. Um, okay. So you can take that information. That'll be something you can have on hand for you. Um, yeah. I've handled Jizo, Magpie, um, Stephanie, oh, Elizabeth. Uh, you head home. Um, you get there. There, you know, dad's fine. Uh, brother's studying. Perfect. No news. No nope. nothing. Nothing new. Cool. Uh, does uh, let's see. It would be like a it's today Monday then. Oh, um, or is it Sunday. Oh, um, make an insight check. Oh God. What day of the week it is? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> Same. Oh gosh. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, everything seems normal. Brother studying. Typical kind of like, you know, aloof nature. And uh, dad is also, you know, this uh, uh, typical just like casual, but at the same time kind of like making sure you're okay with all of his questions kind of thing. Hmm. It seems like he's asking a bit more of those questions, but nothing crazy. Okay. Like That's he seems to be more but... invested in like how you're doing, but uh it's a little weird, but nothing too specific. It's nothing crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you have you have been gone for a yeah. little while and there was also kind of stuff that did happen that might, you know, have gotten to his ear. But uh yeah. Uh, Fair. Great. But is it a Monday and do we have the whole day or are we leaving? I, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, it sounds like well, they're staying for the whole day though. Oh, okay. Well, if we're staying for the whole day, and if it's a Monday, then uh, Sin would also like to see if the guild has work. Okay. Um, if you get into the guild situation, uh, you enter into um, the uh, safe house, um, and an individual uh, that comes to meet you, uh, Tybalt. Uh, Wrong guild. The jeweler's guild. Oh. Not thieves. <laughs> There is Sorry. not there is not any current uh, availability for work. Trade season is in kind of full effect, so everything that's on the table and that's been made available is um, 
either already in the hands of someone else or, um, you know, uh, already out for sale. So there's really, there hasn't been a lot of input yet. Right now it's the earn time. Oh, okay, okay. You kind okay. of had some some end work at the end of the, uh, the summer there. But yeah, unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's nothing too great here unless you want to sell. I don't really have anything to sell. No, 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 no. If you want to oh. sell the gems, like if you want oh. to do retail work and stand around in a booth all day and... Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> most people don't opt for the job, but the job has to be done, I guess. I, I don't know why it has to be done, but yeah, it has to be done, so... I mean, it does have to be done. Does it have to? I mean, so, like we gotta make money somehow. But Sin does not like standing in one place, um, particularly in public. Anyway, if they have nothing, then uh, I th think, yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. So then that would leave, um, you know, Jai probably engaging in just. Uh, keeping Terry um, just down low um, and uh, regrouping. Uh, are you staying the night here or do you want to travel from Knock that night? Or do you travel in the morning? Is there anyone that doesn't sleep? Uh, Aveline down times for six hours. Um, Belroth is a half L? Yeah. I don't think they trance, do they? I don't think so. Yeah, they don't so. trance. So nobody in this party gets away with it. Everybody has to take a nap. Yeah, and if the option is given, Sin would rather have a night at home. Can Namalia have a sleepover? <laughs> at Sin's? At Sin's. Sure. You you offered her a family. She's going to take you up she on did. it. She did. Yeah. Yeah. No. You're welcome to come over. That is an option. Belroth has a whole ass guild uh, with plenty of bed space. Um, Zen yeah. did make the promise to give that offered That's family. Fine. Harry, um, you are um, bedded um, by Jai. Not that way. Unless. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless. I ship it. I ship it. <laughs> I'm in. You know, at this Whoa. point. <laughs> so Zach gets back and I'm like, okay, I don't I don't know how to tell you this, but um, you and Chris's character are in a long term relationship. Um, <laughs> Casual though. You've set a date. You've set <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> But and casual. Terry, you what? Terry but it's proposed, casual. but it's just like a glass diamond, it's not a real no. diamond. <laughs> real talk, Jai, Jai would probably refuse. Um uh, Jai, Jai likes to uh, move. If if you get my meaning, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Fawns, you, you know. I mean, that's how they play, I guess. Mm. But anyways, if that's the case, then you wake the next morning. Jai and the uh, fun bus uh, meet um, Aveline at the South Gate. Um, the uh, good old fashioned uh, cart of uh, dragging copper around is being carried by copper and is loaded to the back of the bus outside of the city uh, walls. Uh, everybody kind of all inside and uh you start chug chug chugging away um very similarly to how you've done before um and head towards the herbalance ranch and we'll pick up next session with you arriving there and meeting yet another face from the past thanks for watching okay. those that did and we will see you not next tuesday the tuesday following we'll be off next weekend or next week as I will be in vacation mode. Okay. Ciao.